Pitt Panthers getting set to take the field at Heinz Field. Winners of four of their last five games still have a chance at the ACC Coastal tonight without a key player. For more, we go down to the field in Molly McGrath. Yeah, that's right, Adam. We have some injury news as Pitt's top receiver Maurice French is out for this game with a fractured mandible suffered on November 2nd against Georgia Tech. As you can see in the fourth quarter of that game, he returns a punt and then he takes a knee or a leg to the face and he did not return in that game. The team is expecting him out for at least a couple of weeks but they're hoping to have him back November 30th against Boston College and French had a procedure done this past Saturday to fix that fracture. He now has a plate in his jaw and in his absence to Sear Mack is going to get some extra carries is going to that slot position and quarterback Kenny Pickett told me that Maurice French is his security blanket but he got some extra work with Mack over the bye. Mack. Great stop Molly. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. And that takes us right to Pitt, kicking away to North Carolina, and Michael Carter on the return. And Michael Carter getting the edge, hurtling over the kicker. Just left over Alex Kessman, who delivered the kickoff. He takes it for 40 yards on an excellent return. So Sam Howell, think about the company that he is in this year. When we talk about Joe Burrow, Tua Tunga Vailoa, Justin Fields, all those teams are playoff contenders with excellent quarterbacks. You wouldn't necessarily think of a true freshman in Sam Howell being on that list, but it's 25 plus TDs and 10 or fewer interceptions, five or fewer uh, interceptions this year. And North Carolina feels great about this young freshman quarterback. Originally committed to Florida State, but then he changed his mind when Mac Brown became the head coach. And he strikes to Daz Newsom, team leading 47th grab. He goes for 13 and a first down immediately into pit territory. His composure as a freshman has been something that's impeccable. He's very confident, he's very comfortable, doesn't get too high on the high or low on the lows. This is a Hollywood story, North Carolina kid leading this Tar Heels team. And you saw him start with the RPOs. That's the bread and butter play of this offense, a run pass option. Rush set of downs and a strike to Diami Brown out on the perimeter. He gets wrapped up for a gain of six on the play. Look at our impact players tonight when North Carolina's got the football. No surprise, Diami Brown is key. Taysier Mack on the other side of receiver. For sure, and you saw that pass there to Brown, but it's because of last week. Three touchdowns and over 200 yards receiving last week alone. So you got to be aware where he's going to be at tonight. But again, with the run pass option, it's very tough for the pit defenders to decide is it a run or is it a pass? It's actually both. Here comes Michael Carter on the carry. It's stopped at the 43 yard line by Deslin Alexander. No gain and a big third down for Pitt's excellent defense coming early. Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina, said, I got to get the plays in quick and we got to get the ball out of Sam Howell's hands. They've given up a lot of sacks. Third and mid range here. Let's see what they do. Pitt is top three in the country in sacks this year. Howell gets rid of it to Brown quickly. The line to game was the 37, and he got smacked by Dane Jackson, a yard shy. And guys, I would think two down territory here. Something to think about. They're coming in with big personnel. You see the extra tight ends coming in. You see the wide receivers coming out. And I think just judging by that play call, Pat, you mentioned Phil Longo, offensive coordinator. When he goes with that play call like that, he probably had a plan that this was going to be two down territory anyway. Give it baseball signals over there, Phil Longo. <laughs> Fourth down in Heinz Field. Well, keep it on the ground with Antonio Williams, and the pit defense stands strong. Watson Alexander in the thick of it, up front for Pitt. Well, Pat, you mentioned, hey, we got to get the ball out quickly. That was the first thing he said. The second was, we need to match Pitt's physicality. The D line for Pittsburgh is the strength of their team. This time it was Watson Alexander, but it's usually Twyman and Jones with them. That front seven, they've taken a page out of the great Aaron Donald. This is the identity of the defense. Well done, big stop. D coordinator Batesy and Narduzzi said it's a team defense concept. You saw it there. Disruption, big time stop. Now we got the ball in Pickett's hands. And he fires a strike to start his night to Shockey Jacques Louis. 
He takes it close to the sticks and he picks up the first down to the 49. Sophomore had his first career touchdown in their last game 12 days ago at Georgia Tech. Get a whistle and a flag thrown from the far side. Snap infraction on the center. Mm. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. It's Jimmy Morrissey, the veteran center. So here's Kenny Pickett. Among 38 quarterbacks that were invited to the Peyton Manning Passing Academy, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, Jake Fromm, the list goes on with high quality QBs. But he got invited through a text from none other than Archie Manning out of the blue. And who does he end up sitting across the dinner table from one of those nights? Peyton Manning. And he picks Peyton Manning's brain for a good chunk of time. He's passed a ton this year. That's a change under Mark Whipple, the new OC. He finds Jared Wayne, the true freshman, and he picks up minimal yardage out to the 50. He gets six on that play. Yeah, it's a pretty cool story. You see Trevor Lawrence there in that photo. He was actually Joe Burrow's roommate down yeah. at the Manning Academy. And having the opportunity, you mentioned it, with Mark Whipple as the new OC, kind of thought of as a quarterback guru. Nice little matchup that they've got here in Pittsburgh. So how about Jared Wayne? He had one career catch against Duke this year. He's already got two on this drive. He picks up eight to set up third down and short. Yeah, with Maurice French being like down, now the other wide receiver's got to pick it up a little bit. Wayne's been getting a, a couple balls here early for a freshman. It's nice to see him get hot. We'll hand it off to A.J. Davis, needing just a yard. And the North Carolina defense comes up with a third and short stop. Maybe a decision for Pitt now. Yeah, and again, you talk about the physicality. I don't think there's any hesitation here. You know, Pat was talking about Kenny Pickett and Mark Whipple. He asked Mark Whipple before the game, he said, hey, you going to take a shot early? And he said, no, no, cold weather. I want to get him a completion early. And that's what they've done. So everything's gone as planned for Pitt so far. And I think they believe that they can get fourth and half a yard. They go with the eye formation this time. See if they moved it enough with Pickett. Looked like he was right at the 41. This will depend on the spot, and it is good enough for a first down. A little push, push. Quarterback sneak right up the gut. All hands on deck. Center gets a big time move. Then the running back and fullback come in and move Kenny Pickett. Big time first down to extend the drive. Yeah, Jimmy Morrissey, he's the only returning starter up front. He's their captain. He's their big squat guy. Strength of the team in a lot of ways. Came here as a walk-on 571 days later. He's a scholarship guy. Now he's a captain. He's the center who snaps to pick it. Pick it for Wayne, and it was through his hands. Jared Wayne, you guys talked about it. He's going to be key today with Maurice French's absence. Well, this is a really good play call. The safety split. The middle of the field is wide open. A little stalk and go on the linebacker. They're not able to connect, and they're going to regret that one. It's a pretty good throw, drop pass. This season, Pitt has had some drop balls now that have bit them in the hiney. <laughs> Pick it again to throw. He's a good runner. And there he goes, Kenny Pickett. He gets hyped up once in a while, too. But he's tough. He can stare down a guy once or twice a game. He picks up a dozen. Well, he stares, stares down his entire progression. He goes one, two, three, four. Then he decides to tuck it and run. Good ball security. And that's what your teammates love. When you see a kind of a throwing yeah. quarterback tuck it and run, it fires him up. It certainly got this crowd going. They said he's not known as a super runner, but he's a 4-7 runner. He's an athlete right there. Big time play by Kenny Pickett. Also. When you get in somebody's grill after, that's the identity of the entire team the rest of the game. Pickett's got time, and he'll smartly get rid of the football. He's throwing a career high in completion percentage this year at 61%. Does have eight interceptions, six of them coming in the last four games. Yeah, and that, you got to learn to throw the ball away. There's a fine line there. I think up in the box, though, Number six, Aaron Matthews, the wide receiver, had an inside fade. It looked like they had a shot to score there, so I would expect that they come back to that play. But again, when you have a young quarterback, getting him to understand when to throw the ball away and just to do it, it's not as easy as you think. We've got Wildcat here on this one. Vincent Davis, the freshman, he's got a hole. And a good run on second down to set up a manageable third. 
from Vincent Davis, the true freshman from Florida. Bringing an off-balance set there to the right. Let him kind of bide a little time, find a hole, pick up a quick six. And nice other, play. The other thing that works right there, Pat, you, know, you mentioned Davis, the freshman. When you come in as a wildcat running back quarterback, there's nothing to think about. The right. ball is snapped to you, and then you're hitting the hole. So it actually is a way to make it easier on a younger player if you put him in as wildcat. They've been very successful this year with that formation. Here. The old wildcat here for the Panthers. Get it? Because it's a cat. <laughs> Pick it into traffic, and it's dropped. Incomplete. Trying to find John Bartzell, a redshirt freshman who has one career catch. Another guy who's got to step up tonight. That's two here early that seem to have gone right through the hands. And Kenny Pickett's wearing a glove tonight because it could be a little bit chillier. Narduzzi said it almost looked like he was throwing darts a little bit. Yeah, he's he, been uh, accurate. Well, you know, Ben Roethlisberger wears the gloves sometimes. Mark Whipple was Ben Roethlisberger's coach. Not a surprise to see him in two gloves tonight. Happy for Alex Kessman, by the way, turning around here as of late. 41 yards in Heinz Field is no joke, though. Kicking away from the Rivers, and Alex Kessman, who had a rocky start to the season, has made 11 of his last 12. Redshirt Jr. out of Clarkston, Michigan. This guy's got one of the biggest legs in college football. He's true from 41. Pitt, three nothing Pitt. They got a fourth down stop and then came away with a field goal. 1794, that's a long time ago, Adam. That is many years ago, from what I understand, Patrick more than 200 years ago. Shorter kick this time. Antonio Williams heading into traffic. And Pittsburgh, there were a couple guys claiming they had the football on that one. Good coverage. Well, North Carolina has played eight one-possession games this year. None closer than Sam Howell trying to win it inside of two minutes on the two-point conversion after they had come within a point of knocking out Clemson. And then on October the 19th, how about this? The first time that we saw the new iteration of overtime rules. Sam Howell trying to make it to the end zone. It ended up being a 43-41 loss in six overtimes. This is the most one possession games for North Carolina through nine games since 1936. Also a long time ago. Pat. Talking to Mac Brown last night, he said he's used to winning those close games, so losing them this year has been heart-wrenching, but he knows he's got a good squad. Anytime you're in games like that, you've got a good team, and that's the ACC as a whole. Nothing there for Javante Williams. Good rally by that excellent pit front that you were talking about, Matty. Yeah, it's really the strength. You talk about this front seven. They don't trick you defensively. They line up basically the same defense each and every time, but they're very good at their scheme. And then they make a little slight adjustments off of splits and route combinations and formations, which side the back is on, stuff like that. Powell wanted to take a deep shot. He'll throw to Bo Corrales for a first down, though, on the near side. And it took a couple of Pitt Panthers to bring Corrales down. And then after all that, there are flags thrown from multiple angles. This is an excellent job by Sam Howell of pulling the ball down. He was looking for the deeper throw and realized, hey, now's not the time to get greedy. He's been very good at not turning the ball over this year. And instead, he comes down to a check down and gets 22 yards to Corrales. Well, offensive line gave him a lot of time there, too. Mm -hmm. That's going to hold up. That's good news for some. The results of the play is a first down. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 34 defense with targeting. 15-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So that's a 37-yard play. play. And obviously, they're going to review to see whether there was a targeting penalty. This is huge. Amir Watts at the end of the play, a key member of that front, a senior from Chicago. Targeting. Yeah, you got to appreciate all these fans giving you some love tonight, right? It's great to be back home for sure. Uh, anytime I get back to Pittsburgh, I get a chance to enjoy the hell out of life. I grew up in Plum, which is the East Hills here. I got a chance to donate a gym to the football team. And Amir Watts is saying thanks to the refs. I get to play <laughs> a little bit longer here at Heinz Field. They did wave off the targeting. It's still a 37-yard advancement because the personal foul for a late hit is still intact. But they waved the targeting penalty off. Interesting after that last look. I wonder if maybe the officials didn't get a great look on that last angle that we just saw. Because it looked like a helmet going into a helmet. 
But either way, no targeting. Amir Watts gets a stay in the game, and Javante Williams runs it for four. That is a huge break for Pitt because that would have been a big loss. And like you said, Adam, that view right there was a little bit condemning. But uh, Amir Watts gets a second chance to stay in this game. Coach Narduzzi is going to be happy about getting one going his way there, it feels like, with the refs of the ACC. He's had some issues at various points this year, although you could probably say that about every head coach. Sam Howell off to a five for five start. He finds number five in Daz Newsom, just shy of the line to gain. DeMar Hamlin, the safety, was there. It's been an impressive start for Sam Howell here. The composure, the accuracy on the road, Heinz Field, Thursday night, good start for the freshman. But they got to do it in short yardage situations. That's what ended their first drive. Here they are in the third and one. And they do pick it up with Javante Williams. Still on his feet down near the 21 yard line. Finally wrapped up by Paris Ford. We talked about matching physicality. This gives you a lot of confidence. You go into the game with a bunch of runs on your sheet. You hope they work. You're not sure if they're actually going to work until you call them. And then you see your guys firing off the ball. Gives you confidence to take some shots. They do here. Looking for Corrales. Mm. What a play by Corrales against Jason Pinnock. He wins the battle for a touchdown with a flag thrown. I think our guy Randy Mouse is going to like this one. Sam Hawkins is wide receiver shot. Defense, number 15. The penalty is declined. The result of the play, touchdown. Fights through a little P.I., gets a big-time tutter in the corner for North Carolina. We mentioned the play action will come after you start running the ball well. He actually goes left and then all the way right, Pat, gives him a ball. I think this is a You Got Moss nominee. Bo Corrales with another great catch. This one counts for six. That's a big-time catch right there. Noah Ruggles, who's had some struggles. <laughs> that was fun to say. Oh. The various times this year. Bars. True to give North Carolina a 7-3 lead. Guys, Bo Corrales a touchdown in five of his last six games. I don't know if that was him. <laughs> well, Pat 6-4 makes it easy. Our buddy Chris Berman getting set for NFL primetime. He used to call Whoop. games when Mark Whipple Whoop. was at Brown. How about that? That is Whoop. an incredible connection for Mark Whipple, the OC of Pitt, and Chris Berman. Boomer and TJ have ESPN Plus's version of NFL primetime Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern time. Fair catch signal by Shockey Jacques Louis. And out to the 25 comes Pitt. Boomer's friends with everybody. He is friends with everybody. everybody. Every coach, Andy Reid, Mike Holmgren. There's, there's your guy, Bo Corrales. Pat. I'll tell you what, I didn't know that was Bo Corrales. He's got that baby face. He's got a sleeve. <laughs> and he went up there and got it. <laughs> Phil Longo said he's the best contested catch guy they got on the team. Sam Howell has a lot of confidence in him. They showcased it early. I had no clue that a guy that handsome could be that vicious in the end zone. <laughs> he's had big catches late in games. That key drive against Miami earlier this year. He's had huge clutch catches. And now Kenny Pickett's in a 7-3 hole. And hours in the tattoo chair. <laughs> Pickett launches. He's got a man. Taysir Mack. His big play threat from a season ago. Average better than 20 yards a pop last season. He goes for 48. Well, we talked about Tasir Mack needs to step up with Maurice French half. This is called stepping up. Splits the double on the post. Perfect throw. Great route. Huge catch. This is a young secondary for North Carolina. I expect them to get tested, especially if it works. You're going to see more of it. Riddled with a lot of injuries uh, in the minutes. secondary. And obviously, if you're an incredible offensive coordinator like Pitbull has been in the NFL and in college, get Kenny Pickett confident early and then take a shot. They have Kenny Pickett jog all the way over to Mark Whipple in between plays. He gives him a little bit of advice, gives him a play, and then Kenny Pickett jogs right back out to the huddle. Mark Whipple, pro style passing game, very multiple with formations, uses the unbalanced formation, like he you said, for Pat. It, Chris. But again, I think. When you're talking about developing a quarterback, Mark Whipple has shown that he's he's one of the key guys that can do it. Been very, very successful. We'll run it with A.J. Davis on second down. He'll set up a third down and medium coming up. So, so this is Kenny Pickett going over to Mark Whipple. 
You don't see this very often anymore, Matt. No, you see it in high school, but they, 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 they don't have the coach to quarterback communication system at the college level. So it's either signal it in, but you got Whipple, who's an NFL guy. He's like, listen, I want to give the play in a little coaching nugget, just like they do in the NFL. On third down, a first down strike inside the 15, and right on cue, it's Taysier Mack once more. Redshirt junior out of Brooklyn, the former Indiana Hoosier, picks up the first down. And it's pretty fascinating the way that the Pittsburgh Panther facility is lined up. It is actually the same building as the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you got Mark Whipple, who used to coach Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger is basically in the building every day. These Pitt Panthers, I feel like, are at a huge advantage uh -huh. with the Steelers right next door. Yeah, Tomlin calls Narduzzi, gives him a little pep talk every once in a while. It's a unified force here. That's There's A.J. Davis. He gets by Aaron Crawford. Mark Whipple, former quarterback at Brown, a football coach since 1980 between the college and the NFL, but he was the quarterback coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 40 when they beat a certain very handsome, wow. very talented quarterback on the other side you had to in Matt Hasselbeck. Up. You wanted to talk about Mark Whipple. You walked <laughs> into that. Too, too soon, guys. 2006. That's yeah, too, too soon. soon. That 13 years, you, you got to wait 15 years at but, least. But it really is it really is a cool thing to see all those lessons and the success that Ben Roethlisberger has had and to see him pass it on to a college kid much the same way. Kenny Pickett evades the initial wave. Kenny Pickett showing off some moves and turning it into a positive play. Third down coming up. Coach Narduzzi talks about when he's talking to recruits, they got to epitomize what the city is. Tough, gritty, physical, and that is what Pickett is. He's got the gloves on. He sheds a few tacklers, moves the chains a little bit. Now it's third and mid-range, makes something out of nothing. The kid's a heck of an athlete. He is an athlete, but I will say, Pat, a struggle for this pit offense has been red zone touchdown efficiency. Mm -hmm. It's always the goal to come away with seven instead of three right now. 48% touchdown rate in the red zone for Pitt. Trying to cash in on third down. Kenny Pickett wrapped up and brought down by maybe the best defensive player for North Carolina, Jason Strobridge. Fourth down. This guy's a stud. He just got invited to the Senior Bowl. He'll have a shot at the NFL. Fourth down again for Pitt coming up. Strobridge is a difference maker. Really no hesitation here by Narduzzi. I'm surprised to see them go for it. This isn't fourth and half a yard. This is interesting. Yeah, they had a situation at the end of that Penn State game from inside the five-yard line where they opted for a field goal. They're going for it on fourth down inside the 10. Motion Bartzell into the slot. Pickett, Mack, back shoulder, incomplete. Excellent coverage by DeAndre Hollins, the redshirt freshman who's been thrust into the cornerback role in this injured secondary. Narduzzi's yelling at the refs, and he thinks he held him a little bit there. Going for it on fourth down. Pickett throws a back shoulder, goes off the shoulder pad and down. North Carolina ball on the other side. What about myself? Catch the ball. But if I'm the quarterback's coach, I'm saying that ball should be back shoulder, outside, up by his outside ear. If he did that, I believe it would have been a touchdown. Missed opportunity for Pitt. And now a long field in front of Sam Howell, who's seven for seven to start his night. And he finds Daz Newsom out on the perimeter. And he uses his speed for a first down. Good block outside by the receivers Corrales and Deami Brown. 14 yards, guys. Really nice getting completions. But Sam Howell, don't let him fool you. He takes those deep shots as well, uh, Adam. One of the better deep ball throwers in the country this year. we try to swing it out to Michael Carter, and that's a great open field tackle by Cam Bright, the redshirt sophomore. Sam Howell has been very efficient today. Longo said he's gonna get the ball out of his hands quickly. They've done that. He's also been able to sit in there and kind of go through his progressions and make some plays. Big time stop by Pitt there to make it second and 15, 60. Back to the ground, and Carter gets stacked up. Leaning down Cam Bright for that tackle. Ends up being maybe a gain of a yard on the play, and it's third down and long. Hey, don't undersell the fact that they're right in front of this Pitt student section. We, we thought there'd be a lot less people here. They've actually shown up for the Panthers. They're going to make some noise here on this long third down.
Never heard of the Oakland Zoo, Adam Amin? At the Pitt Panther basketball games, one of the best student sections in the country. Mm -hmm. Blitz coming from Pitt. Howell hit as he throws, completes it to the tight end Carl Tucker, but he is hit shy with DeMar Hamlin that shuts down the Pitt defensive drive. And that will force a punt from the Dublin, Ireland native, the freshman Ben Kiernan, born in Dublin, grew up playing rugby, moved to Raleigh, North Carolina five years ago and started paying attention to football to North Carolina. His parents actually moved to the research triangle, so Ben's sister, who has cerebral palsy, could actually get better treatment. Great area of the country for medical research. Great to see the dual citizen of Ireland and America booting it away past the coverage. They'll get a friendly roll all the way. Pat McAfee likes that roll inside the 30-yard line. No yard left behind there. He's a freshman. He's going to get more consistent. But anytime you get one away when it's almost blocked is beautiful. Hey, are you excited about going to Waco for college game day? Pat McAfee and Oklahoma Baylor yeah. in a huge Big 12 showdown Saturday night on ABC. I can't wait to get back to Waco and watch Charlie Brewer and the boys of Baylor. The Sikkim Bears hosting the Oklahoma Sooners. It's a big one for the Big 12. Trying to keep their college football playoff hopes alive. This is a tough test. Listen, Baylor's been tested. We saw it two weeks ago against West Virginia in a close game. And then a very <laughs> difficult game against TCU. 20, <laughs> question mark? Hmm. That's my guy right there. Good hair, good sign, good hand. Uh, I'm, assu I'm assuming that's your agent, right? <laughs> He's a lot younger than I thought <laughs> initially. I thought you had a more experienced guy, but I like that you, you, you're, you know, you're giving out jobs to the youth. And he's supporting the Movember movement as well. <laughs> I have plants all over the place. Uh, if it's going to get me on the greatest show on television, I'm excited about that guy. <laughs> Seven to three in this key flash in the coastal. The Pitt Panthers need to win out to have a chance. North Carolina needs two out of three to get to a bowl. You know, and Mike Ditka race. And I don't know if those are illegal blocks in the back or what it is, but Mike Ditka from Allen Quip of Pennsylvania. The Bears. Ditka takes it to the house. 100 yards with a mustache. Larry Fitzgerald's a little wind. Larry, Larry Fitzgerald looks so sad. He's a fast twitch guy. Larry. Larry Marino, Fitzgerald's, Marino a, Marino yeah. Larry Fitzgerald's a very happy person to be around. That guy looked very sad. I believe that man might have smoked four or five cigarettes before hopping <laughs> in that bubble. <laughs> That's like Jim Leland or something. Ooh. First down pit. Philippe Carter got hammered on his way out of bounds by DJ Ford, the safety. And he had some things to say to him after it all. Well, we saw the scuffle pregame. These two teams wanted to get into it. Wow. Ooh, man. Good sideline shot. <laughs> That's when you need your get back coach on the sideline to make sure everybody's back. Pick it. Eluding pressure again. Looking for Mack. Threw behind him that time. And it was a complete good effort, but a good breakup by Miles Dorn as we check into the Adam. Adam, you guys referenced the scuffle before the game. Well, UNC players went into the locker room and told Mac Brown about it and said, yeah, you told us this was going to happen. I guess Coach Brown warned them. They had watched tape of the Duke game and that pit players get a little tough, a little feisty before the games, push guys around a little bit. So UNC was prepared for it. They knew that this was going to happen. And Mac's uh, message to them, don't take the bait. Just stay calm. Pit players are tough. You guys are tougher mentally. Brian Hess, I wouldn't want to mess with the strength and conditioning coach for North Carolina either. He loved it. Yeah, he, put, he helped break it up, and that got really into it. A.J. Davis, they like to use him in the screen game, and that's a big gainer all the way down to the North Carolina 30. 28-yard catch and run for A.J. Davis from Lakeland, Florida. Offensive coordinator Mark Whipple told us he was going to get the screen game involved yesterday when we met with him. Perfect timing for this. The big guys get in front and clear the way. Big time game here for the Pit Panthers. Whipple. What? <laughs> Miracle. Whipple with the call. <laughs> Mark Whipple, last five years as the head coach at UMass. In his second stint, he won the Division I AA at the time title in 1998 as the head coach at UMass. Pickett, under pressure again, launches for Mack, and it's broken up at the last moment. X 
excellent coverage going back by the linebacker slash safety, Dominique Ross. These are good plays by the defenders. Very good plays, but for the quarterback, for Pickett, he's going to watch the film tomorrow. Both times where he scrambled out to his right, it's been just a little bit off with these throws to Matt. That time it was underthrown. The previous time it was behind him just a little bit. He'll regret those. These are missed opportunities. I would count it as three. Ah. I think he's playing pretty well, but those right. are three missed opportunities that he's going to look back on and just he'll regret them. Back to the ground and Davis got tripped up. Shy of the 25 yard line, third down coming up. And those are going to be the connections that have to happen tonight. With Maurice French out, Tasir Mack has to step up and be that, you know, guy that comes down with these critical catches, especially the off schedule throws like we've seen the last two. That guy in the lower left corner there, Joe Burrow, really good at football. <laughs> Saturday Night Football on ESPN, LSU number one in the college football playoff rankings against Ole Miss. Pick it to the end zone. Deflected and caught. Shockey shot Louis. Touchdown with the penalty marker thrown. Shockey with a shocking catch. Tip drill. How you doing? Give me that. Kenny Pickett in the center of the beautiful celebration. Number 15. That penalty is declined. Result to the play. Touchdown. This is not bad by the redshirt freshman Hollins. We mentioned someone had to step up with French out. This is a heck of a catch. It's a good throw. It's a catch for a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. They're going to review this one, but guys, I got to believe that this is a touchdown. Great comp, great uh, concentration. Mm. Double clutches it, goes up at the highest point trying to get it. Shocky Jacques Louis Wee oui, Wee oui, on the tip drill. <laughs> Mon frere. What a play in the corner of the end. Now, granted, they're going to see if he got his hands under it there at the end because it kind of moved from up in his chest down to his side. But man, I got to assume you'll withhold that one. Uphold that one. If I had to ask you what you thought Shockey's brother's name is, what would you guess? Amazing. It's an amazing name. We Wowie. have Shockey and Rocky. That's awesome. I love the mother and father of that family. Shockey Jacques Louis had his first career touchdown in their last game 12 days ago at Georgia Tech. He's taken a bigger role as of late. I mean that was just a big time throw in a big time catch by a wide receiver. You see Mac Brown talking with the officials. I get a sense that we're going to see both Mac Brown and Pat Narduzzi talking to the officials all night long. Mostly because of one thing, and Matt's already talked about it. We're expecting, and I think we've had, a physical game mm -hmm. so far, especially with receivers and DBs. Yeah, a lot of bump and run, press coverage. Sometimes they'll do it with two safeties. Typically, Pitt plays that way. Carolina plays with one safety. Really puts these guys on an island just a little bit. It's a young secondary, young corners, and yep. it's, it's a tough job. Covering be, some of these receivers. I'd be the flexing. ACC. I'd be flexing for the camera too, though, if I just made a <laughs> catch like that. This is a tough division conference. You get it. Very well, good teams. What do you guys think on the review? A little bit think? of movement, certainly. Uh, is it enough for the ground to sit? Is it enough to say that the ground forced that movement? It has to be indisputable. Indisputable video, video evidence. evidence. You cannot be able. You're not able to dispute the evidence that was on the video it's indisputable I feel like there's going to be some disputes about most videos that they review though I got to just say you know that's two touchdown catches now in the same corner of the end zone that are two of the best catches that I've seen this year sure two Excellent Moss grabs. candidates two, two Moss candidates two you got Moss absolutely candidates. Oh. And the crowd's got a little restless now at this point. And I, I listen, I, I'm all I, for getting it right. I, I feel I, like if you're looking at it for this long. And if you're looking at the reaction of Pat Narduzzi. And Mac Brown, both coaches aren't happy with what's going on. I think Narduzzi's going to be disappointed if they say it's not a touchdown, obviously. And then Mac Brown's going to say, hey, are you kidding me? You're going to call pass interference on that? Yeah, let's not forget there was a flag thrown as well. So if they take the touchdown off the board, the penalty Both would still be such a Dennis and the ACC refs have no shot right now. <laughs> Dennis is the head of officiating. For Dennis Hennigan, you're referring After to. After further review, who's determined that the ball was rolling on the ground, it is an incomplete pass. 
the 15-yard defensive pass interference will still be enforced from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Exactly what you guys said. So Narduzzi is unhappy because there was a touchdown taken off the board. Mac Brown is unhappy because he's saying, how are you going to call pass interference on that play? At the end of it all, it's no touchdown, pass interference stands, fresh set of downs for the pit offense. And I think we all agree that the ball did touch the ground. Mm -hmm. Can, is so there enough there to say that the ground forced the lack of possession? That's what the officials in the replay booth are looking and at. And that's where we're coming back to. Was it indisputable video <laughs> evidence that that, that ball touching the ground was the reason that he was able to catch the football? And let's remember that the call on the field was a touchdown. A touchdown. But the amazing thing is, I've watched a lot of football. I've never seen both head coaches at the exact same time. <laughs> Curse out the official. <laughs> well, it's gonna, it might be a long night for our buddy Dwayne Haight and his crew tonight. And these fans are letting him have it. Absolutely. That. So after all that, you spot the ball after the pass interference penalty, 15 yards ahead to the 12, and it's first and 10 for Pitt. These fans. The are going to take a touchdown away from us because of that? Great question by the people in the crowd. I hear a lot of oi in the crowd right now. I think more than anything else. Ends can't see nothing. <laughs> so now Wildcat again. They go with A.J. Davis in that spot. He'll keep it. He's got blockers, and he gets tripped up inside the 10 yard line by Miles Dorn. Picks up four, <laughs> and the crowd comes right back into it in the Steel City. Well, they're not going to forget what just happened, you know. I mean, they think they have a touchdown. Instead, they got a second and six here inside the 10-yard line. And again, they're 0 for 1 in the red zone tonight. We mentioned coming into this, they're ranked 114th in the red zone in terms of touchdown efficiency. How Can many teams are there? <laughs> 130. Jeez. Pick it over the middle and Taysir Mack able to pick it up. It's shy of the goal line, but it's good enough for a first down and it's first and goal for Pitt. First and goal on the one. The crowd is not letting these refs forget. <laughs> you got to be careful though. They're being loud while their team's on offense. Pick it, keeping it, cutting it, scoring it. Touchdown Panthers and they jump back out in front. A little billionaire strut there too by picking at the end. I can respect everything about that. Rolls to his left, finds a hole, hits it, gets it, tells the Yinzers, don't worry about the touchdown that was called back. I got you, boys. Jacques Louis had his score taken off the board. Pickett runs it in instead. That is his first rushing touchdown of the season, the sixth of his career. Extra point from Alex Kessman. That is good to make it 10-7 in favor of Pitt. We thought Shockey Jack is still pulling. We thought Shockey Jacques Louis had a touchdown for a second straight game. It was taken off the board. The pass interference kept the drive alive. And Kenny Pickett cuts it. And each of the last six years while they've been ACC foes, you've got a three-point game. Kenny Pickett with the first rushing touchdown of his season in a heavy pass offense as Pitt out in front and Carolina comes out to the 25 yard line. A look back at our enterprise drive recap. And A.J. Davis trying to get this offense going fast. Yeah, it was good balance on this. It was helped with a screen and a pass interference ball, but the, the wild card Sorry, the Wildcat was the wild card. It gives them a chance to run the ball a little bit more effectively. They're not good at running in the end zone, but this time Pickett on the zone read is able to do so. Not a lot of rushing touchdowns for Pitt, but they'll take that one, even if it's the quarterback on the zone read. That actually can help your running game later on in the, in the, uh, in the night because you have to honor the quarterback keeping it. Javante Williams carries it here for five. The fans did boo through the commercial break, if anybody was wondering. No. <laughs> Not excited about the overturn, but Pickett picked it up. And Pat Narduzzi didn't let the officials <laughs> have a break. He was in their ear the entire time. First down, Javante Williams. We immediately looked to the sideline during that commercial break, and Dwayne Haight was getting it from Pat Narduzzi. I mean, you talk to Coach Narduzzi, he says, hey, 
there are a couple calls if it goes a different direction a lot of things have changed for them this season hey listen between these two teams they played 14 one possession games this year a lot could have changed for both clubs how deep shot well overthrown in fact Paris Ford the pitch safety was the one who got a hand on it that's the first incompletion for Sam Howell on 10 attempts. Well, it's tough to throw a post route against bump and run outside technique coverage. It flattens the throw just, just a little bit too much. I think it was Antoine Green there, but it allowed the safety forward to come over from the other side of the field. So they're, they're just not letting them get free access off of the line of scrimmage. And I think that's one of the, one of the challenges for this wide receiver group. That's kind of their M.O. They're an aggressive defense, leave the corners on an island. They're not scared at all of that. And the same thing, Bo Corrales gets drawn off sides. It's, it's bump and run coverage pre Part to the ball being snapped. False start. Offense. Number 15. Five-yard penalty. Second down. She has pointed out Corrales in the penalty. A look at tonight's PlayStation player impact rating. We were talking about Paris Ford. Tied for the second highest rating in the ACC for safeties, 95, a scale of 0 to 100 to measure a player's impact on any particular game. Harris Ford, the redshirt sophomore from Steel Valley High School in Pittsburgh. I really like him as a safety. The blitz gets to Howell, and it's Phil Campbell. Sack number 41 for the Pitt Panthers this year, top three in all of college football. Well, he's the outside backer. He's in a stacked position, and then he moves last second, comes on the outside. Howell has no idea that he's coming. He comes all the way from the wide side of the field. Huge play for Pitt. Only SMU and Ohio State have more sacks this year. Rocking Darrell Revis' number, making a big-time play here in Heinz Field. Another whistle, and it's Pat Narduzzi. Using the timeout. We'll take the timeout as well. 10.40 to play here in the first half. This is one of the best defensive fronts in the country. Yeah. Mr. Twyman here wears 97 because of Aaron Donald. He's an East Hills kid from Penn Hills right here in Pittsburgh. Takes a lot of pride in his time at Pitt. Built him a performance center. Still has a locker there. He works out in the offseason. Teaches these kids how to become better and better. Potentially the best in the game right now. So third down at 21. They set up the screen pass. Carter still got a long way to go and he's going to end up short pushed out by Cam Bright fourth down coming up little throwback Thursday How about Dan Marina there Pat uh, Dan Marina down there in Oakland had the incredible face mask big old fro but didn't have it here against North Carolina <laughs> this was a big time matchup by the way both teams came in top 10 in the country number one pit gets the Marino touchdown despite the four interceptions and they get the win against fifth ranked North Carolina and, and they're and they're back to wearing the that color uniform awesome. that color scheme. awesome I would like to see the mess jerseys make a comeback fair point did you have to rock the mess jersey uh, no I would have loved to I think you would have you would have rocked it well uh, by the way Pat Marino McAfee, tight connection. This is amazing. So my dad's Timothy right there below Dan Marino. My uncle Owen McAfee, who was a firefighter here in Pennsylvania. Central Catholic High School, 1979. They weren't friends with Marino, but damn, they look good on the same yearbook page as them. There's a lot of smoldering going on on yeah. that particular page. And shout out to Central Catholic for spelling my dad's last <laughs> name wrong, getting his twin brother's name right. Two F's, two E's, no big deal. And he was a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, two E's and cheerleader. Hey, there you there, go. hey there's it's only fair because we have misspelled your name at least 17 times over the course of your entire ESPN career these first few months. No respect. No respect. Hey, no respect. How about a shot here for Shockey? He's got it! Inside the 30! There goes Shockey! Jacques-Louis Tottenham's touchdown! with a 74-yard touchdown, had one overturned the last drive, bounces right back with a dime from Kenny Pickett and outrun everybody in a North Carolina Tar Heel uniform. What a throw by Kenny, what a catch, what a run, what a tutter here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. For 74 yards, tying the longest completion for Pitt this season. 
And things continue to get a little bit chippy between North Carolina and Pitt. But back-to-back -back impressive drives. He saw Maurice French grabbing Shockey Jacques Louis in. I knew you were going to step up for me tonight. Shockey to the house for a 10-point lead. Like you've been there before and get back with your teammates. So despite the touchdown, the coach is chewing Shockey Jacques Louis out, guys. Hey, act like you've been there before. He's only been there one time before, though. <laughs> his this first career touchdown time. came to uh, one game ago in his second game tonight. Hey, now that's a different mindset between me <laughs> and Coach Narduzzi. Swag it out, kid. You just went deep. Here comes Michael Carter on the return for North Carolina. It's wrapped up near the 25-yard line. Matt, tell me about who's slinging it tonight. It's brought to us by Sling TV. Well, Kenny Pickett is slinging it here. They go with a concept known as a deep cross. Someone's going to clear it out on a post. That's Jock Louis. He's just clearing it out for Tassir Mack. But Kenny Pickett's first going to look at that safety on the near side. He's going to see that both safeties are flat-footed, and that's going to give him the alert to take the shot on the post, and that's why they scored a touchdown. So Mack might actually be the intended target on that clear-out play. Play, but Pickett recognized Jacques Louis. Yeah, when you call that play, you're hoping to hit that deep cross. But before you look there to help him get open, you're going to look deep at that post and read those safeties. And if they're flat footed, you take that shot. Well done by Pickett. Antonio Williams breaks free, being chased. And he'll get brought down inside the pit 20 yard line by Jason Pinnock. What a run by Antonio Williams. The longest of his career at 59. Really good physical run inside. He was thought he might take it to the house. Pinnock with a great hustle play to save the touchdown, but this was right up the middle. Pat, he's their power back in that trio of running backs. They got one fast one, a power one, and then a combo. The power guy just almost took it the distance. They got a little law firm back there. The law firm of Williams, Carter, and Williams. Carter is the speediest of those three, and he takes it down to the 10-yard line. And having a committee like that, you know, situational plays can come up. I think it's actually tough for the defense to get a beat on the rhythm because each runner is so different. And they go with such quick tempo that do, I don't think you always uh, are able to, you know, sort of figure that out pre-snap. Phil Longo did say, though, if one gets hot, he'll keep feeding them. There's Carter again. Good shiftiness, and then Paris Ford wraps him up stacks him up the forward progress will give him a couple on the play and it's third down and short coming up and Paris Ford you guys mentioned him as the PlayStation player he's got great instincts very emotional player great tackle right there Randy Bates told me week one sometimes Paris Ford is too wired up sometimes his eyes get a little wandering because he's so wired up but he's one of the best playmakers we have but it's all right because his partner in crime there back there Hamlin he's calm he's very smart you know you can complement each other well, and I think these safeties do. Third big, down and two. Big shift in emotion here for North Carolina. Howell, under pressure, launches it dangerously up the sideline, and it is incomplete. Looking for Diami Brown in desperation with a bunch of blue jersey Panthers out there. He had a guy wide open, too, and the guy stumbled right at the goal line, so he had to go to another option coming out. It's, it's Tucker, Pat, the tight end. They go with what John Gruden might call spider left banana. <laughs> right. And uh, the tight end just falls down, so Howell has to do something else with the ball. Fortunate the ball wasn't picked up, but they're going to kick themselves tomorrow. They're going to look at that play and say, wow, we had a touchdown. Yeah, and Mr. Tucker is going to regret that stumble. Noah Ruggles has been good inside of 40 this year. This from 25. And North Carolina does come away with points to make it a one possession game. Commonplace for these two teams. History here in Pennsylvania. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Pitt Panther Student Section showed up tonight already in the National Watch List, ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. They've honored some great ones here. The late Bill Fralick got honored on opening night here in Pittsburgh. Great city for football. Here comes Shockey Jacques Louis. Got shoot out by Pat Narduzzi after his touchdown. <laughs> Not much of a return there as he gets hit at the 17 yard line by Don Chapman. 
Well, guys, you know Sunday NFL Countdown, your favorite show at 10 a.m. I'll be there with Samantha Ponder, Randy Moss, Rex Ryan, Teddy Bruschi. Got a nice matchup this week in the NFL. Lamar Jackson taking on Deshaun Watson. Plus, we got Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson. Talk about quarterback reps. How you hold the football. Should be an educational thing. And how about this? Our Week 11 Monday Night Football matchup is at Estadio Azteca in Mexico City. No clue if I pronounced that correctly. No, you did good, but Pat. Patrick Mahomes and the AFC West leading Chiefs take on Phillip Rivers in the hot Chargers. KC has won eight of the last nine against the Chargers dating back to 2014. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, in the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at Cease. I've actually been down there at uh, Stadia, Stadium uh, Azteca there. Did you turn right around and go back? <laughs> no, that, that was a different year. <laughs> oh, gosh. I've got a moat around the field so that the fans can't get at the soccer players. It's pretty fascinating. Kenny Pickett starts this drive from the 17-yard line, takes off running. Oh, mm. And the flag does come flying in run. with some impressive velocity from the side judge, by the way. Look like Chaz Surratt, first time we've mentioned one of the top tacklers in the ACC, may have gotten in there a little late on Kenny Pickett. And only one official threw the flag. Usually you see multiple flags thrown right there. Only one guy decided to throw it. And there was one guy standing right there, and he actually pointed at him and didn't throw the After flag. After the play was over, dead ball personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. So tack on 15 to an 11-yard picket run. And Chaz Surratt got tagged. Well, let's take a look here. If it, in fact, is a late hit out of bounds, I think that flag's going to be thrown every time. Chaz Surratt, an interesting story. Former quarterback turned linebacker. His first year really playing linebacker here. He's done an excellent job. I think he's got an NFL future. He will not come off the field tonight. He'll play every snap. These guys are banged up defensively, but even if they weren't, I think he's the kind of guy who just don't take him off the field. Former quarterback turned linebacker. He's second in the ACC in total tackles. He leads in tackles per game. Pick it. Another shot for Taysir Mack. Deflected and incomplete. Miles Dorn had the initial coverage. DeAndre Hollins tried to race in. There is a flag thrown back at the 31 where Pickett delivered the football. Well, they talked about taking double moves Personal on the foul. safety. Rough in the passer. Defense, number 92. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. And that's Aaron Crawford. You know, this pass rush for North Carolina, they got a couple guys that can get back there. Strobridge is one, Crawford's another. Sometimes you're coming after the quarterback. You want to get there so bad Whoa. that you don't know when to hit the brakes. This is clearly a hit the brakes situation. Crawford doesn't do it and costs his team. He could have hit the brakes, let off the brakes, and hit the brakes again. <laughs> that was a little bit late. And Coach Matt Brown said we're a mentally tougher team and all that stuff. A couple late penalties on back-to-back -back plays. Third 15-yard penalty on UNC tonight. Can't win like that, Matt. No, but that was an aggressive play call, not forgetting about that. They took a little in, you know, breaking in route and up on Dorn. The safety, a good aggressive safety. They took the shot. Malik Carter. Went wildcat that time with A.J. Davis handing the Malik Carter uh, down to the North Carolina 34-yard line. And Adam, I've seen a, a few times tonight where it's on first down, where a nice little change up, they go wildcat. Yeah. It's a part of this running game, and I think it also gives them, you know, a chance to catch their breath. I mean, this is a passing team. When you talk to Mark Whipple, he's talking passes half the time. It's almost like he's calling a run to set up the next play that's going to be a pass. Pickett steps up. And he'll get rid of it, being chased by Jeremiah Gimmel. He's been run out of the pocket a lot here this evening. It actually helps him now, though, because he gets run out of the pocket, he throws it away, and now he's standing right next to the coach. <laughs> he's going to play. Well, Matt, think about this, though. You were, we were trying to do yes. the math earlier, so let's say you get tackled or you're on the far side of the field. You got to run like 30 yards to come to the near side of the field. More than that. Yeah, listen, I did this in high school. You get tackled on the other sideline, you got to go get the play from the coach. That's a long run. And then you got a third down play next. Forget about it. Well, hand it off, and a hold for Valique Carter. He's got the first down inside the 30. Finally finished off by Don Chapman. But six yards when they needed to move the chains. Yeah, and Carter's usually their receiving back. He's a former defensive back. He's real shifty. He's got nice moves. 
but I've seen him very effective in empty backfield sets. That's a big, when you're trusting a guy to hand the ball off in a third down situation like that, well done. Well, and the entire right side of the offensive line caved into North Carolina defensive line. Great blocking up front by the big guys. You know, I played here around this time when it was the Steelers. This field gets a little mushy, uh, messy, sloppy. You can see it starting to pull up uh, inside the hashes. There's already a divot on the 32-yard line on the far side of the field. Dump it off for Bartzell, and not much there. Got run down quickly by Chaz Surratt and lost a yard. That Chaz Surratt story is an awesome one. I mean, granted, he got the late hit, which cost his team ultimately. Playing quarterback last year. Big guy. They think he can be an NFL linebacker. And Pat, there's a lot of NFL scouts here tonight, some GMs, some VPs of personnel. And you think about the guys that go on to play linebacker. This guy, he hasn't had a lot of wear and tear on his body because he hasn't been playing linebacker until this year. Boy, Pickett's been running a lot tonight. He picks up the first down and slides inside the 15. Just a smart football play by Kenny Pickett. Sees opportunity and takes that thing. You can see why they trust him. He had the nice throwaway earlier on second on, uh, second down. This was an excellent job running the football, getting down. Picked up 14 yards. Now under pressure, and he gets wrapped up by Jason Strobridge. We're going to see him play a little bit more outside the rest of the season to try to get some NFL scouts a look at him at that position. He's played it well. He has, he's had some pressure. Uh, he's lining up outside, like you said, Adam, at defensive end. He's got some nice moves out there. Stays with it, comes up with the sack this time. If you're the left tackle, Warren, you've got your hands full today. That is an excellent player on the opposite side. By the way, Coach Mac Brown said, yeah, we're moving him outside because a lot of the NFL folks think that's where he's supposed to be. He's not supposed to be on the inside. Very nice move by the coach looking out for Strobridge's future, which is probably going to be on Sundays at defensive end. Got some NFL GMs in house tonight, including Rick Spielman from the Vikings. Pick it on second down. Find Jacques Louis in space. Shockey Jacques Louis inside the 10. Finally hit out of bounds by Don Chapman, the freshman. Picks up 12 to set up third down and short. You talk about the Minnesota Vikings. That's a team with good defensive ends. Yep. Like I mentioned earlier. They trust this quarterback. They trust him calling pass plays over and over again. And this field is, is pulling up. Yeah, there's a, there are divots being created. They go out wide. A.J. Davis, he gets wrapped up by Greg Ross immediately for a loss. And it's going to be fourth down. Matt, real question here. And I'm not uh, too humble to ask this. That was thrown backwards. Is that on yeah. purpose or is that just a bad run? Well, it doesn't really matter because it just counts in the stat book as a run. But I will say this. Don't oh, look at the divots. Don't it fall funny. asleep on that backwards pass because I have seen them. I believe it was the Syracuse, Syracuse game. game. They throw a double pass right off of that. Hand so off, look, backwards pass, pass and, downfield. And they're yep. looking for that in the booth. If they feel like everyone's sucking up on that like they did there, don't be surprised to see the double pass. 26-yard try for Cashman. No good. Pushed it wide to the right, Pat. Well, I was about to say, with the soft saw, that can affect a kicker. Your plant foot might slide a little bit. You might push it. I don't know if that's what happened with Kespin. Normally, very good kicker. Misses a short one. I've done this before here. That's tough. This drive from the 20 and nowhere to go for Michael Carter as he gets wrapped up by Tyler Bentley. This field has been a topic of conversation by these refs and the workers at this stadium. And this time of year in November, there have been a bunch of Pitt games and a bunch of Pittsburgh Steelers games as well. So right around this time of year is when you start to see between the hashes, especially the field, start to get chewed up. How back foot throw under pressure into a lot of traffic. And it looked like it came out loose at the end of the play. Boy, Michael Carter somehow with four defenders around him almost came up with that very dangerous pass. Russell Wilson threw that little soft floater on Monday night. It almost looked like that, but it was a fadeaway right into quadruple coverage. You thought it looked like that. I thought someone was going to call for a fair catch. <laughs> this was kind of a specialty play where you get the running back down the middle. A shot play, if you will. Pitt was not fooled. And it looked like he may have had possession, but referees ruled that he did not keep possession through the ground. Howell 
On the move, he connects. That's a first down across the 30 for Bull Corrales. And this is clinic tape by the quarterback and wide receiver. Hal pulls the ball down. He's getting blitzed. He has pressure in the pocket. He breaks contain, and Corrales moves with him. Well done. Hal. Newsom breaks a tackle. He's inside the 50 and finally chopped down in pit territory as we check in with Matt Berry. All right, guys, coming up in the Mazda halftime report, why is Bo Nix a key to an Auburn win on Saturday? Plus, how does Baylor stand defeated against Oklahoma? And Joey Galloway is literally going to predict the future. That and more coming up in the Mazda halftime report. Great stuff, boys. We'll talk to you soon. Minute 20 left. Diami Brown, he got tripped up, going the other way by Dean Jackson, picks up eight to the 35-yard line. North Carolina has all three of its timeouts as we approach a minute to go. Mac Brown talked about last five, first five. Sam Howell's been very accurate here down the stretch. We'll swing it out. Carter dropped it, ruled as an incomplete forward pass, and that'll stop the clock with 53 seconds remaining here in the first half. Don't forget that Pitt will get the ball to start the second half. And that's the thing with you guys mentioning these sideways passes. Is it a forward pass? Is it a backward pass? I believe that's a forward pass. But if I'm a defender, I'm getting on that ball either way because you just don't know how the officials are going to see it. Because if there is a clear recovery on a play like that, it can go the other way to Pitt. Third down and two. Timeout. And Pat Narduzzi will timeout. use his Pittsburgh. second timeout Their here. Second. We're back in 30 Atlantic Division. Pat Narduzzi's team lost to Clemson to the ACC title game a year ago. They're still alive for the Coastal Division if they win out and they get some help on Black Friday from Virginia Tech. If the Hokies can beat the Cavaliers and Pitt wins out, Pitt will be in the ACC title game once more. Third down and two for North Carolina. On the ground, and Antonio Williams, their short yardage power back, moves the chains. Yeah, Adam, you talked about this coastal division. You take out Clemson out of this ACC equation, it reminds you of the NFL. There's great parity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Jets beat the Cowboys, the Browns beat the Ravens, the Ravens beat the Patriots. That's kind of what I feel about this coastal. Ball was loose, rescued by Antonio Williams, and Matt Brown has to use his first time out because of it. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. We're back right after this. <laughs> Been moments of sloppiness from coaches and from players. This is a moment of sloppiness. This is not what you're looking for. And Mac was talking about how his hair's going gray <laughs> at times. But he loves these kids. You can definitely tell that after spending some time talking to him. He's mentoring these guys, he's mentoring these coaches. He's really enjoyed being back in North Carolina. The win-loss record isn't what he expected, but uh, I would contend I think these guys are winning in other ways having him back. And I would say not a lot of people expected them to win the first two games out of the gate. I don't know if a lot of people expected four and five. They won two games in Larry Fedora's final year. Sam Howell still on his feet and finally brought down. Meet me at the quarterback. Hava Baldonado from Italy and Jalen Twyman meet up at the QB. And North Carolina has to use a second timeout. Pitt has now tied SMU, a team we saw get nine or seven sacks, beg your pardon, against Houston a few weeks back. Pitt's got 42 to equal the Mustangs most in the country. Yeah, and it was really impressive talking to defensive coordinator Randy Bates about the sacks. Like, how are you guys so good at sacks? And he's like, sacks aren't the thing. I'm not focused on sacks. I'm focused on technique, effort, assignments. But it's because you're focused on those things that you're getting all these sacks. Hey, this is Taylor, another great opportunity, Pat. Taylor Twyman's about to run through a human right now. Panthers pin their ears back. Howell over the middle, diving catch. It is complete with a flat thrown. What an effort by Daz Newsom. The ball came out loose. DeMar Hamlin started running with it, but a penalty marker was thrown. After all that, if it's a completion, that might get him back into field goal range, potentially. And now the crowd is going to enter the fray and let their voices be heard.
Couldn't hear him, but we saw it. It was number three, DeMar Hamlin for targeting, guys. And I think DeMar Hamlin believes that he has every right to that football, and he was going for the interception, and I believe he might have gotten it. And I believe I might be wrong. Yeah, I just came in late there to break it up. Picked it up on the ground, great move. Helmets do seem to touch there a little bit. Incomplete pass, but... Oh, I, believe, I believe I got it way wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you did. But it's not a big deal, because live it looked like it. That's how good of an that's, accurate it was. It was a bang-bang play, guys. Yeah, this is uh, one of those, like, victims of circumstance here, which is interesting about the targeting rule. You're trying to make the game safer, obviously, for these student human athletes, but every once in a while when you're trying to make a play, it's going to be something like that. Hamlin was out the last game with a lower body injury against Georgia Tech. Back in the lineup tonight. Again, a receiver going over the middle. Again, he's a defenseless player, so that's one of the axioms right there. Is there forcible contact above the shoulder pads? It looked like there was. There's clearly a launch, not because he was trying to hurt the receiver, but he is thrusting towards the ball to try to get it. I get what you guys are saying here, because a receiver and a DB should, in theory, both have an equal opportunity to the ball, but that becomes, like you said, maybe a victim of circumstance. And based on the rule, how the rule is written, there's a very good chance that Hamlin's going to be out of Absolutely. this football. Absolutely. Well, and the, also, there's, there's no motive, right? Like there, yeah, you, you can't judge intent because yeah. then you're opening up a big Pandora's box. His mic still doesn't work. We see confirmed if we're reading lips properly. <laughs> Just gave the strike symbol. Yep. And Damar Hamlin is out for targeting for the rest of this game. And that is a big loss for a senior who is a very good safety playing in his 36th career game. He and Paris Ford are very close, great chemistry. They're a great duo. And now you got to maybe turn to a much younger player in that position, potentially. Yeah. An incredible mustache man walks him off the field here. This is going to be a big loss for this pit defense that prides himself on having an aggressive, talented secondary. Next man up in this situation. So it was third down and 26 too, guys. So that penalty keeps the North Carolina drive alive with still a timeout from the 31 yard line. Howell. Lumps it up there and it's picked off. Intercepted by Damari Mathis. A flag is thrown at the six yard line. Mathis running in for the pick. Great break on the ball by Mathis. He just gets there before the wideout. That flag came flying 20, 30 yards. We got some arms on this referee crew, I guess. Yep. It would be his second interception of the year if it's dance. Thing came flying in there like it was flying out of the hand of Rowan Gardner. <laughs> Give him the cheese. So this is fun. Dwayne hates Mike doesn't work, but it's going to be rule <laughs> Pittsburgh football. So there was no flag on the play, I guess. I guess they happened. picked up the flag, and it is the second pick for Mathis this year. Had one against Miami. It's really a mistake by Sam Howell. They've got, they've got a chance to at least come away with three here. Doesn't have to force it on first down. But he forces it. This is a cover three. That corner is midpointing, meaning he's covering the guy on the outside, but he's got his eyes inside, so he can kind of two and two on one it. Sorry, one on two it. Cover both guys from his spot. Sam has not thrown a lot of picks this year either. Yeah. Only that's number a, six on the season, Pat. That's a big one going into the half here. Pick gets the ball in the second half. North Carolina could have stole something there with that big penalty with targeting. Now instead. Pitts fans are letting the refs know how they feel about their first half and Pitts going into the locker room with a seven-point lead. Guys, a lot went on in that first 30 minutes of game time. That was back and forth. We saw a lot of reviews, a lot of physicality as we expected. And they even had to drag one of the Pitt offensive linemen out of the pack. Matt Berry's in the studio, much calmer. Jockey Jacques Louis back to a turn. And it'll be a touchback pit to the 25 yard line as we get a look at tonight's game flow brought to us by Progressive. Started with babyface Bo Corrales getting North Carolina in front. Well, Pat couldn't believe that that's what Bo Corrales looked like because that looked like Randy Moss at wide receiver. 
Both received, both sets of receivers were coming down with plays. That one was called back, said the ball hit the ground, but Pickett said, so what? I'm going to take it in on the zone read. Gets the touchdown for the red zone score. A lot of fireworks, like you said, Pat. Here's the post. What's this guy's name again? Shocky Shock Louis. I love how you say it. And then we talked about the brain dead play at the end there by Sam Howell. He had had a perfect half going. Throws the interception there. Can't happen. Pick it. Connects. He's got a man. And right away into North Carolina territory goes Aaron Matthews. Kenny Pickett has had a heck of an evening here in Heinz Field. Drops back, first play of the second half, gets comfortable, composed, and then drops one in a bucket for a big first down. And you heard Mark Whipple yesterday talking about Rattler. That's the Rattler right there. A guy runs a post on the outside, the inside guy runs a corner wide open. 30-yard completion sets him up at the 45. Pickett to the sideline, and he's able to find his tight end, Will Gragg. Molly? Well, Adam, at halftime, Mac Brown was extremely frustrated with the chippiness and constant fighting in this game. His message to his players is just shut your mouth and just play. And then on the mm. other side of things, Pat Narduzzi told me he loves the physicality and chippiness, saying this is our house. I want our guys fighting and showing their toughness. He's really, really happy with his quarterback's play, saying Kenny Pickett is playing lights out, but he wants his wide receivers to step up, grow up, and execute better in the second half, especially without Maurice French. Again, Maurice French, 75 receptions on the season, broken mandible against Georgia Tech 12 days ago, hoping to have him back late in the year. He'll run it with A.J. Davis here, trying to stretch it to the left, and it's going to be ruled down at the 39-yard line. Good job getting on top of it by Nakia Griffin Stewart, the tight end. What do we say? About 90 minutes before kickoff, these two teams were getting after it. The physicality continues as Aaron Crawford looked like he nearly stripped the ball first, and Griffin Stewart saved it. And Pat Narduzzi said turnovers have been a problem the last two games. They had six. Zero so far. They dodged the bullet on that one, though. Third down and four. Quick pop and deflected incomplete. Had a couple of receivers in the area, both Shockey Jacques Louis and Taysier Mack, and neither could get a hold of it. It's fourth down. Well, he thinks he's hot, which he, I understand what he sees, but Chaz Surratt is right there in coverage. He's fortunate, fortunate that that ball wasn't picked off. So Kirk Christodoulou, who had been struggling as of late, he has great control on these sky punts, is what Coach Narduzzi calls it. But this is an area of strength. Perfect. Pitch and catch with the golf swing afterward. Perfectly executed by that pit football team, pinning Sam Howe in the North Carolina Tar Heels at the five. By the way, Pitt leads here. Steelers are trailing right now. Molly McGrath earlier tonight was with a key fan of Pittsburgh. <laughs> are conflicted tonight as the Steelers are playing the Browns in Cleveland. That's just over two hours away. Both games are kicking off at the same time. Pat Narduzzi was not happy about the scheduling conflict. And let's talk to some fans. Uh, you, sir. You, sir. What, sir. Hey, guys, don't be throwing the football up in the state, though. No. That's just an outside thing. We ain't doing it in here. I tell you, this game even start, and they're already at the end of my overtime. Uh, sir, hey, how sir. you doing? Hi. So why did you decide to come to the pit game over watching the Steelers tonight? Pit game over watching the Steelers? What do you, this is the pit game. I thought, I thought this was like some kind of retro blue flashback for the, you're telling me the Steelers, they're in Cleveland tonight. I tell you, no wonder these tickets were so cheap. That's the last time I buy tickets from a guy standing outside the Kogos. I tell, the, the good thing I paid him in Cole's cash. Uh, what, what, what do you think about Pitt? You know anything about Pitt? Uh, you know, they're coming off a big win last week, so a little momentum, a little better coaching. They can take the, you know, they can take the division. Okay, well. Uh, hey, Deb, if you're watching at home, Run down to Heinz Field and bring my James Conner jersey. I need something else to wear. And, you know, bring me that nice 78-79 uh, retro one. I get $100 says she brings me a, a Bumblebee Isaac Redmond one. All right. Well, uh, Pitt fans uh, not only conflicted, they're a little confused, Adam. I don't I, I don't know. Can they play that? Can they play the game up there on that screen? I, I, I see them putting up restaurant commercials and all that. We play the, the Steward game there. I have to watch two for down here. We'll do what we can, sir. All right. Enjoy the game. All right. Ha, 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 ha.
That felt very Pittsburgh to me in that moment, Pat. How, on a scale of one to ten, how Pittsburgh was that moment? Oh, that guy's a super yinzer, man. Antonio Williams gets brought down. Third down coming up here. <laughs> Can you give me a little bit of context for anybody who, who is as confused as these Midwest folks are, like myself? That human right there is a living legend in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh dad. He obviously thought he was coming to the Steeler game. Got cheap tickets, probably off SeatGeek. Now here he is in Heinz Field at a pit game. And it's been a conflict of interest here with the Steelers and Pitt Panthers playing at the same time in Pittsburgh. Narduzzi's not happy about it. Steelers fans aren't happy they're losing to the Browns. It's a big Thursday in Pittsburgh football. On third and four. Trying to lunge ahead, Garrett Walston. And it's close to the sticks. The line to game was the 28, and they gave it to him. Able to muscle ahead, the junior out of Wilmington, North Carolina, for a first down. This is just a triple slant concept, reading it in inside out. Well done by Pickett. Or sorry, sorry, with the Howell. Both quarterbacks having a good night so far tonight. Looks like the forward progress caught it prior. Had a shot downfield, trying to connect with Daz Newsom. Second down. And just as I say that, another missed opportunity. That one would have been huge, probably six. Daz Newsom. They said they wanted to get him one on one with a safety, if possible. Here he is running right down the middle of the field. Sam Howell has been a second half performer. Second half in OT this year, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions. That's second most touchdowns in all of college football. This freshman shows up in the second half, missed one there, though. And Patty's done it with big plays as well. These aren't dink and dunk touchdowns. He's chucking them down the field. It's been a hallmark of this offense this year. Antonio Williams powers ahead, and he's got the first down. A lot of contact there as he got upended by Jazzy Stocker. He's going to play a key role as a safety with DeMar Hamlin out for targeting. He got upended at the end, but he's a bruiser. He's a physical runner. We've seen this a few times tonight, and I feel like what they probably talked about at the half at halftime was coming out and running the ball some. They did it early, and here's another shot. Looking for De'Ami Brown. Incomplete. Dean Jackson, very good corner, was in coverage, could not connect. And this is the second time where a North Carolina receiver has gotten behind a Pitt Panther defender. Ball's a little bit off target. He has to change his angle there at the end. That's oh, tough oh. to do, though. Catch those long balls over the shoulder. The greats can do that. I think he kind of let it out there, kind of ran away from it. Yeah, and I think Sam Howell, again, he's going to regret those two throws. He's going to look back at it and say, wow, I could have had it. But this is what he's been so good at, is keeping his cool. Even when he makes a mistake all season. Rontavious Groves hit in open space by Dane Jackson. This is an excellent tackle by Dane Jackson. A corner, usually corners, they get a rap that they're not great tacklers. This is an excellent tackle. He's also a captain on this team, a leader, a great cover guy, very aggressive. Free play. How? Just tests it up the sideline and it's incomplete. Trying to find the freshman Emory Simmons. It looked like there was a Panther in the neutral zone, though. Offside. Defense. Number 91. Five yard penalty. Still third down. It's Patrick Jones, who will give five yards to Sam Howell and will replay third down. And they use this clap and shotgun where Sam Howell will clap his hands and that's where the ball, when the ball is snapped. And Pat Jones is a great pass rusher. He's probably getting a tip off of that clap. And there it got him. It fooled him. And you, got, you got to give credit to the center, Brian Anderson, snapping that ball whenever he realized somebody was in the neutral zone. Take a shot. Now Phil, it's third down. Phil Longo told us that this clap was developed in loud stadiums. They took it to the science department to see if the clap actually worked. What the North Dakota, he said. It's at a different octave. Panthers blitz against the run. Williams cannot get away from that first line of defense. Excellent job by Cam Bright. Cleveland native. Playing for Pitt. Adam, you said it against the blitz. Sometimes with a gap scheme, meaning a pulling guard, you can split that blitz. They're blitzing because they think it's a pass. Third and four or five, and they came and they hit him with the run. Good play call. It didn't work. Pitt was up for it. Nice play by Cam Bright. 
Started three times this year, had a 79 yard fumble recovery against Georgia Tech in the last game. Then Kiernan boots it away. Barzell getting an opportunity with Maurice French out. He'll take it to the 15 and give Pitt a little bit more cushion. Beautiful night here in Pittsburgh, PA, at its own 15 yard line. Kenny Pickett will hand off to A.J. Davis to start this series. Good run on first down. A rare run on first down. Gemmel runs it back, runs it down from the backside. Mark Whipple is not afraid to set up the run with the pass. A right. lot of people do it the opposite way where they're run, 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 go to play action. You see a little bit of that out of North Carolina with the RPO game. But Mark Whipple, I believe, is a pass first kind of play caller. Former quarterback at Brown, he said a football coach between college and the NFL since 1980, took over for Sean Watson, who's now an assistant at Georgia. A little jet sweep here. And a first down for Shockey Chuck Louis. A couple of runs that get him across the 30. And it was the shift in the motion before this play. This is a very simple play for Pitt, but because they had the shift in the motion, the defense is on their heels and they're thinking, and Pitt's just going fast. Well, throw here, low throw, incomplete. Trying to find Will Gragg. This is what you were talking about, Matt. They went from 111th in Pat Narduzzi's first four years in pass attempts per game to go into top 10 with Mark Whipple coming in for his first season. Very pass heavy compared to where they've been in years past. A lot more play action as well. No doubt in Pat Narduzzi we were asking him some questions about the offense and he almost seemed like eh, I leave that to those guys. You know <laughs> let's talk defense. Yep. Let's talk special teams. A.J. Davis keeps his feet for the first down. Excellent maneuvering. Like there may have been a penalty marker thrown though on the play on the near side at the 36. Holding offense, number 67, 10 yard penalty, first down. So that's Jimmy Morrissey, the one veteran on this offensive line that came back from a Joe Moore Award semifinalist line last year. He's right in the middle of the screen, tries to get the guy, grabs him by the collar, it seems like. Whips him back, gets the call. Now that's the first holding penalty called on a UNC opponent. I think since week two, week three. According to Mac Brown, at least, I, I, I will say we did not have an opportunity to go all the way back and decipher every penalty that's been called against a North Carolina opponent. If you ask Mac Brown, he said that's the first holding penalty call against one of our opponents since week three. Max said he asked Dennis, the head of officiating, he said, what, are they just coaching him better? Is that what's happening? It's been a long time. Picked up a big one there after a big play by A.J. Davis. Pick it. Rifles. First down inside of North Carolina territory. There's the first connection between the New Jersey boys. Pick it to Nakia Griffin Stewart. 28 this is, yards. This is an excellent throw. This play is known as a form of all go special. Somebody shallow cross. That means the three guys on the right, they're switch releasing it, but they're all going deep. They're just running seam routes and outside go routes. Well done. Like pick it. Who's on the move? And has space and runs it near the 40. He's been doing a lot of that tonight. Very impressive. 4 7 40 guy. He's been getting outside, extending plays, picking up some yardage where nothing's open for him. And this has been a little bit of a weakness of North Carolina also. If you watch the Virginia game, they're letting the quarterback run all over the field. Now, Pickett is a much better runner. You mentioned the 4 7 and the 40 yard dash, Pat. Not surprising at all. This kid plays fast on the football field. There's Mack. Got tripped up by a diving defensive back in Storm Duck, the true freshman. Three yards for Mack on that play. And for Mack Brown, they're playing so many young guys in that secondary. They're talented players, but they're getting on the field way earlier than they probably should be because they're so beat up. During the summertime, Bryson Richardson, starting safety, had a preseason Achilles injury. Week two, Patrice Rene, their starting quarterback, tears his ACL against Miami. Miles Wolfolk gets hurt against App State, hurts his shoulder again against Virginia. Trey Morris in their best cover corner played against Virginia with a broken arm, and he's now done. 
Excellent push by A.J. Davis, continuing to power ahead, moves the chains on third and short. And that's another gap scheme play in a short yardage situation, third and one. Gap scheme meaning we're going to double team. Two guys are going to block down. An offensive lineman's going to pull around. And he cut right through the middle of that defense. A young defense that sometimes can show up in the second half of a game when they wear down. Pick it towards the end zone. Deflected and incomplete. Storm Duck in coverage that time against Shockey Jacques Louis. True freshman stepping up. Guys, this is the same concept that they scored the touchdown on earlier. You're going to have somebody running a deep cross and then a post behind it. Here's the post. The ball's not really led. It's kind of thrown right, right at the receiver. Allows Storm Duck to get involved in that. It's interesting, Matt. You pointed out tonight. Pickett's thrown the ball well, but a couple inches the other way, a couple inches ahead. He might have a couple more touchdowns tonight. And I know I'm being nitpicky, but I, I just think I expect a lot out of this kid. They're saying he's going to be a quarterback at the next level. If you're a little bit more accurate, you're going to have a lot more touchdowns. Three yards there for A.J. Davis. Third down coming up, Pat. Now, granted, if you're throwing about 40 times, we're going to see him miss a little bit more due to the pure volume of passes. But that's the confidence that Mark Whipple has in Kenny Pickett. He's not scared to let him throw the ball over the yard. And with his young secondary in North Carolina who's been injured, and North Carolina won't make excuses, but it's tough whenever you have a brand new secondary. It seems like they've been holding up here. And I, I gotta think, Mark Whipple, I thought he was crazy when he said, yeah, the quarterback's just gonna run to the sidelines between every play. But think about it, he runs over and he's getting coached up right there. Mark Whipple had a couple sentences for him right before this third down play, kind of re resets him after the missed throw the play before. To throw on third down, underneath, he's got Jared Wayne and another first down. Pitt able to convert into the red zone. Guys, they went right back to that same play, that all go special, somebody shallow cross, and he didn't read it the same way. I, I'm not trying to be nitpicky here, but he had a walk-in touchdown if he would have kept his eyes downfield instead of thinking first down. But again, first down. New set of downs, and you'll get a chance to throw a touchdown here. But wow. I thought he bounced back, hit a good guy in stride there, missed a touchdown, a missed opportunity. But that's a mental toughness of Kenny Pickett. Gonna need it if he is gonna play at the NFL. Pickett dancing over the middle into traffic and somehow caught at the 10 yard line. Under pressure. Well, it's another completion. Nice job, but check this out. We got the trips formation over here. All three guys, they're gonna split. Check out the receiver in the middle, running right down the middle of the field with split oh. safety. No oh. one is nearby. And the tight end, I think it's Greg. It was Greg, yep. He's being nice. He didn't complain or say anything. Tight ends are usually nicer than receivers. Receivers will come back all upset. Tight ends, you know, <laughs> a little more humble. Pickett lines up wide. You see his numbers tonight. A.J. Davis in the cat. Running right. He's steering inside the 10. Line to gain is the 6. And it looked like he's going to be stopped maybe a yard shy. Third down and short coming up for the Panthers. Inside a 3 to play in the third. He really used his Wildcat as a weapon for them. Kind of keep the defense on their heels a little bit. We throw the ball a lot. We bring in Wildcat. We can run the power offense. It's a very well-balanced offense, even though they throw the ball so much. And for Pickett, he was just the wide receiver on the far side of the field. Came he all the way to down to the near side. And one third <laughs> yards over to the sidelines. Now he runs back to the right hash. It's third and two. If he's got a scramble right now, he might be gassed. <laughs> We'll hand it off to Davis. Big hole. A.J. Davis. Touchdown, Panthers. <laughs> Looked like he broke the play pretty clearly. Saw Jacques Louis walking down there. He's had a couple explosive plays, but knows that rushing is a team game. Offensive line opens that thing wide open, and then people blocking at the next level. Good touchdown for A.J. Davis. On a really good 14 play drive, spanning 85 yards in six and a half minutes. 
Kessman gives Pitt a 14 point lead. How about this? Pitt on the ground. Getting some rushing touchdowns tonight. Pick it with one. Davis now to put him up 14. They started booing you yeah. in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. My first time ever in the stadium, I won the punt pass and kick. I don't, I'm not sure I would have beat Andy Reid, but then I got to go to the national championship down in Tennessee, and the Steelers just so happened to be playing. I got booed by 65,000 strong after saying hi to my mom at the age of 15. <laughs> little mental toughness there early. Michael Carter with the return out to the 26. When we come back, we're going to show you one more Pat McAfee moment. In this particular play, one at Dan Espy. He somehow juked 12 people, and one of them just so happened to be yeah, me with a miss right there. Oh, look at that. I love the look. Very. I'm staring at a man that's going to go make over $100 million in the NFL. Embarrass me in front of my friends and family at Heinz Field. I think we got the win, though. Mm, $124 million to be exact. <laughs> I did not he make was, that. He was ready for, with the research right there. RPO a little too tall for Antoine Green on the pass from Howell, and it's second down. There's something to be said, though, about this Pitt team and tradition. Darrell Rivas, one of the best players of all time, Pittsburgh guy. Aaron Donald, one of the best players of all time, Pittsburgh guy. Dan Marino, one of the best players of all time, Pittsburgh guy. This city loves their team, and they also love whenever players drop passes that are potentially touchdowns. <laughs> like which, in that particular case. Which that was. A play action. Another deep shot. Looking for Daz Newsom, and it's overthrown. Man, a double move there. Excellent play call by Phil Longo. Daz Newsom has two steps on the defenders. They're running their double moves off of the safeties more so than off of the cornerbacks. That ball needed more air. Sam Howell misfires. That's another missed, up, missed opportunity for a touchdown. Sam Howell has more touchdown passes of 20 plus yards this year than any other quarterback in the country including Joe Burrow. Sam's got 13, Burrow's got 12. He finds a man in Rontavius Groves over the middle and that second effort by Groves gets them to the line to gain. And that is an impressive catch by Joe Groves. That is over the middle, no fear, fighting for that extra yard to get the first down. Impressive, and that's what they need. They need someone to step up and make a play right now. Finding a hole, Antonio Williams. He's bursted for some big runs tonight. He picks up 11 for a first down. He's their bruiser, their power back, their big guy. He's been finding that second, third level there, getting through. Big time runs from him, Mr. Antonio Williams. He looks like he might be limping just a little bit. Give it right back to the former Ohio State Buckeye. Dan Williams. And a solid run up to the 46. Paris Ford chopped them down. This is the second year for Antonio Williams in North Carolina after coming over from Ohio State. How do they feel about Ohio State and Pittsburgh, Pat? You know, I don't really think Big Ten, ACC, Big East. I mean, Pennsylvania, Ohio always a rivalry. I don't know if Pittsburgh absolutely hates it. I was curious about that. Little toss to De'Ami Brown, first down inside the 35, and a late penalty marker thrown from the lead official, Dwayne Haight, for the offensive backfield. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist, number 68, offense, 15-yard penalty, still second down. That's the center, Brian Anderson, called for the illegal block below the waist. That's really too bad because it's an excellent job. They bring a corner blitz. Excellent job by receiver and quarterback. De'Ami Brown recognizes it. Sam Howell recognizes it. So the route was probably a deep route. When you see the corner blitz like that as a receiver, you just turn and give your quarterback the numbers. It's called a sight adjustment. By the way, freshman quarterback picking up hots and things like this, Sam Howell has been very, very impressive. He's a film junkie, Pat. They say they got to tell him to go home sometimes. Like, hey, you've been here too much. Go home. Phil Longo says, hey, there are rules, so I can't talk to him. He's in there by himself. He's the son of a coach. Pat Narduzzi will use a timeout. Pittsburgh. We'll step aside as well at 39. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Katie George will all be together for North Carolina State and Louisville ACC Network primetime football on Saturday night. We're going to see North Carolina State again in a week against Georgia Tech. That's right, down in Atlanta. And I love that ACC network. You get not just football, you get all those sports. The Olympic sports. Killer field hockey tournament last week. <laughs> I know you're paying attention to field hockey. Your daughter's a great player. 
What a leaping attempt by Bo Corrales inside the 35. We'll check the flag with, I would imagine, something in the neutral zone. Offside, defense, number 34. The penalties decline, result of the play. First down. Amir Watts on the penalty. They'll take the game with Corrales. And a credit to North Carolina with a freshman quarterback taking advantage of these free plays. You see a lot of people just letting this go, taking the five yards. They're taking an aggressive approach. Free play, 50-50 ball. Throw it up to the six foot four. Bo Corrales has made plays already tonight. There's another one. Howell wanted to take a shot. Got grabbed once, got grabbed twice, and got wrapped up by Deslin Alexander for a loss. That may take us to the end of quarter number three. He said if the Pitt Panthers need to win out and they need a little bit of help from Virginia Tech at the end of the season, but they still have a chance to win the Coastal for a second straight year. Step one in this final stretch is to beat North Carolina. Pitt has a 14-point lead through three in Pittsburgh. Take a look at that Wake Forest Clemson game. 34 point favorite Clemson. It's final ACC game before the ACC championship. They'll have a bye week and then they get South Carolina. The winner of the Coastal gets Clemson in the ACC title game. Pitt's got a shot at it. As we start the fourth, Deslin Alexander is there to stack up Michael Carter. Third down and long coming up for the North Carolina offense. Good slate of games. College football is only going to get better right now. We've had a heck of a season for the 150th year in the ACC. You know, the cream of the crop. You know who else has got to get better? Sam Howell's got to do what he's done all year in the fourth quarter. He's been a great fourth quarter quarterback. Third and long is not ideal. Let's see what he's got. Nothing downfield. Still looking. Across his body, incomplete. A flag is thrown. We'll check that marker. Effort by Daz Newsom to dive back towards the football. Initial indication might be defensive holding here. I think you're right. To Mac Brown's delight. Holding. Defense. Number 12. 10 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Parrish Ford gets tagged with that holding penalty, keeping the North Carolina drive alive. They had third and long just then. And Sam Howell does a nice job. Usually you don't ever want to throw the ball late down the middle as a quarterback. We mentioned Paris Ford. He's kind of the guy now with Hamlin out because of targeting. I think the officials might have oh, gotten the wrong guy. Yeah. I don't know. Looks like maybe it was Dane Jackson, 11. We pointed that's out 11. The referees announced Ford. Either way, that's not going to make Pat Narduzzi very happy. Right. There goes Williams again. Shedding tackles that bruising back takes it for eight yards. By the way, Pitt is the fifth most penalized team in the country coming into action tonight. That is a key penalty. Well, they have a very aggressive style on defense, especially in the secondary. So sometimes that can cause a lot of penalties. And going into this game, Coach Narduzzi was not happy with what has happened. That's too that's a call there that is a massive call to this game. Questionable. Antonio Williams with that run goes over 100 yards rushing. He had 137 yards on the season coming in. You said it, Pat. Phil Longo is going to ride the hot hand. How to the sideline and a backpedaling catch by Newsom. That is a grab inside the 15, a first down for North Carolina. This is a really nice throw. It's a long throw from one hash on the right all the way outside to the left. He looked like he might have bobbled the ball. Looks like Marcus McKeithen, the right guard is down. We talk about, a lot about the left tackle. Charlie Heck he has got a great Sam Howell right out of the gate. Fires to the end zone and has Deami Brown. North Carolina gets a key score. And they're back within a touchdown. What a play call. Two guys wide open. Sam Howell sees them. Red zone touchdown. Nice long drive. Tenth straight game for him with more than two touchdown passes. And even more so in the fourth quarter, this is when Sam Howell shows up. He now has 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions in the fourth quarter in overtime this season. He is a playmaker whenever it matters. Delivered the ball perfectly. Touchdown, North Carolina target. Shane Bouchelle and Sam Howell both have the most touchdowns in the fourth quarter in the country this year. Big score for North Carolina. Both of these teams have played a ton of one possession games. You've got another one in the fourth tonight. 
Years in a row. If that happens this year, that keeps the door open for Pitt. But Pitt, before that, has to take care of business. And right now, North Carolina isn't going away. Back down by seven points. And I feel like the Pitt Panther coaching staff is well aware of how close they are to getting that Coastal Championship again. Absolutely. Well, and also, they didn't want to talk about it, but North Carolina has won the last six here against Pitt. That's right. Last six in the series since joining the ACC. And now this is what all the scenarios look like. No, the line on this that blows me away is 1,024 potential scenarios for the ACC Coastal. But this is how it happens. Virginia just needs to beat Vatek. Virginia Tech needs to win out, which would include a win against Pitt and Virginia. And Pitt needs to win out, and they need Virginia to be uh, to lose to Virginia Tech on Black Friday. There's still a lot that can happen. And by the way, these are only three scenarios. There's a lot more behind this. There's potential for chaos with multiple three loss teams in conference. And that's one of the things we heard from this coaching staff was that there's just parity in this coastal. It reminds them of the NFL. That's why situational football and penalties are so important. Square root of 32 there. That's more than there are in the division. Square root of 32? Uh, 1,024 has a square root of. Oh, the square root of 1,024 is 32. I thought you were saying. I see what you're doing. Quick math about. joke. What it means is anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, not anything can happen. Only 1,024 things can happen, apparently, Pat. Who comes up? That's That's got to be the toughest job, the scenario builder, the scenario searcher. Who researches that? It's an algorithm. But for Kenny Pickett, I think the tough job is after that long drive for UNC is staying warm, staying loose. It's been a while since he's been out on the field. Pickett, incomplete, down to Molly. Adam, after Pitt's last possession, Mac Brown went up to his defensive players and said, your body language is bad. Don't hang your heads. Pick up your energy and keep playing. He finished with, you know how to win late in games, but you need to show me more energy. So Mac walked up and down the sidelines trying to incite some more fight from his defense. Let's see if they respond here. It's a young defense, an injured defense, certainly. And then Mac made it a point to say, we're not trying to use that as an excuse, but it is difficult. Defense trying to come up with a stop and unable to hold on on this play is Nakia Griffin Stewart. Initially ruled a catch. Field judge comes in and says it's incomplete. DeAndre Hollins, red shirt freshman, comes in late to jar it loose. Wow, this is a good throw and a good defensive play. This is a New Jersey to New Jersey with Griffin Stewart being the Rutgers transfer. Kenny Pickett hosted him on his visit. They couldn't connect there, but that was very close to being a first down. Big play for Carolina. We see Kirk Christodoulou off this time. Alex Kessman is punting for the first time since high school. They're using him on the longer kicks. This is the first three and for Pitt as well. And a flag is thrown from the defensive backfield. The play clock was winding down. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Down. So Kessman is out there. I've been in a situation where you're normally a kicker and then the coach says, hey, the punter's been struggling in the long field. We're going to give you a chance to punt it. Now he gets to delay a game. This is going to be something he remembers forever. You hope he just sits back there and lets it loose as opposed to overthinking it. I'm excited to see Alex Kessman, who has a massive leg, get backed up again, I think. False start. Offense. Number nine. Five-yard penalty. Down. Getting a little tough here now. And now listen, the only way you can kick an 85-yard punt if the ball is up to 20 is to get another five-yard penalty. That's the mindset <laughs> if you're the punter, is you just have more field to work with now. That's the way you gotta flip it as opposed to backing up now. Very to positive. Fourth and 20. Who, who is the delay of game on? Is that on the punter, the personal protector? Who is that on? Uh, punter's not giving the cadence. The personal protector is. He hits a good one here though. Yeah, first one since high school, late fair catch yeah. signaled. And a 42-yard punt for Alex Kessman. He's part of our College Football Award Spotlight, brought to us by the Home Depot, who's on the Lou, Groza, uh, Lou Groza Award Watch list. Remember, he's got one of the best legs in all of college football, has the Heinz Field NFL and college football record, a 55-yarder against Syracuse last year. His career long is 56 at the Carrier Dome against Cuse. Remember to tune in for the Home Depot College Football Award Show December the 12th at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Did you say he's got the longest field goal at Heinz Field? Heinz Field history, 55-yard field goal. <laughs> so Sam Howell takes over. 
Delivers a strike. That's good for a first down to Daz Newsom. Down to the 41 yard line. How about Pat McAfee doing a little kicking? Number eight, West Virginia against Pitt at Heinz Field. One for five on 40 plus. What was wrong with you, McAfee? That was a soft line, a big leg. No <laughs> clue where it was going. Knew the wind was going to bring this one in. I thought I had the record there forever because it's so hard to kick here. Instead, <laughs> Kessman has come in and blown it out of the water. 51 yards was the record at the time. And then Alex Kessman with the 55 yard kick to break all of the Heinz Field records. You're talking about a glass case of emotions there. I hit that ball and then I have to roll Rivas shake the hell out of me in front of my a, family. It was a roller coaster ride on that particular night in 2006 for you, McAfee. We won, though. So I celebrated very hard in Morgantown. Only took an hour and 15 to get back there, and there you were. Sam Howell, another deep shot. He's got his man. It is caught by Newsom. Touchdown, North Carolina. Another 20 plus yard strike from Sam Howell to one of his targets. You talked about a roller coaster of emotion. That's what it's like being a Carolina fan this year. Fourth quarter, the legend of Sam Howell continues. We mentioned that inside fade. This is a little RPO action with an inside fade from the slot. What a strike. They're right back in this game. And this is fourth quarter Sam Howe. Everything just yep. gets tightened up a bit. First pass of the drive right on the money. Drops it in the bucket. Touchdown. Now we're about to have a tie game here in Pittsburgh. Oh, it didn't I? Noah Ruggles. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you, thought, <laughs> you thought for a second there were going to be some upset folks at you. 48 points on the board, 24 apiece. Sam Howell, an outstanding drive. Howell's face does not change. He told me my strength is staying calm. My teammates are looking for, to me for confidence, so I can't flinch in moments of stress. And he hasn't flinched in this fourth quarter, Adam. He's been one of the best fourth quarter quarterbacks in all of college football this year. Yeah, and it's not just the fourth quarter. He doesn't flinch against the Blitz. 11 for 16 with three touchdowns versus the Blitz. I mean, he just dropped the ball in a bucket for a touchdown, and he just gave a little, yep, thank you so much. He's a freshman, primetime television. This guy has got it. Whatever it is, this kid's got it, and it's impressive to watch. This was a storyline coming into the season. Mac Brown talked to us about it early in the year about how tough it was in the fourth quarter of the last couple of seasons. Minus 72 in 2017 and 2018. Up to plus 55 this year. They've outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter 96 to 41. Wow. And part of that is just believing. It's, it's an intangible, believing in your head coach, believing in your quarterback. Now, or is believing in your defense. Yep. Yeah. Now Pitt goes back to work trying to get back on track offensively. A.J. Davis with the forward progress for three yards. But a tough second half for the Pitt offense. They're averaging less than a touchdown per second half this year. They do have a score here in the second half on the ground. In fact, we haven't really seen the typical Pitt through the air. We've seen two rushing touchdowns in this game from Pitt. That's been a rarity. Yeah, and they were hot, and then North Carolina started sustaining these very long drives, getting these offense on the sideline, kind of cool them off a little bit. That can affect the team whenever the other offense is on the field. 14 play drives, things along of those nature. No doubt, especially on a cold night. Saturday, 8 Eastern on ESPN Plus, UFC Fight Night main card. We got Jacare Sosa moving up to 205. We'll take on a top five light heavyweight in Jan Blachowicz in the five round main event from Sao Paulo, Brazil. You can order it in English and Spanish on ESPNplus.com. You can download the ESPN app to watch it in mobile device. Third down and four. Pressure on Pickett. Escapes the pocket again and delivers past the 35 yard line to Will Gregg for the first down. That was a great play by Will Gregg, adjusting his route because he saw Kenny Pickett rolling outside. When I move, you move. Just Kenny like Pickett that. Pickett says, and Will Gregg does just that. Breaks off his route, breaks to the outside, picks up enough for a first down. You said it well, Pat. Option routes inside. Pickett did a nice job of keeping his composure. Gamble came on the blitz. He was right in the backfield quick. Pickett had to move first down pit. I try to back up that ludicrous reference for you, Pat. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Wide open, Greg. Another first down to the 49. Again, to 
Will Gregg, 14 grabs coming in. He's had a couple of big catches tonight, guys. He's easy to miss in the middle. He's only six foot four, 245. <laughs> the Arkansas transfer. I really feel like the tight end position is a security blanket in this offense. When things break down, you look for that tight end. Greg stepping up. Pickett on the cross. Short game, but a penalty marker is thrown. Back where Pickett delivered the football. Another one. Personal foul. Rough of the passer. Defense. Number 33. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Allen Cater. Part of the linebacker rotation on the perimeter knew it. Yeah, he's more of a defensive end type. He gets in there with an inside rush, just gives him that extra little rollover. I don't know. I don't think that's a penalty 10 years ago. I mean, that's five personal fouls. I mean, that was a little touchy. Obviously, I'm going with a strong disagree on that. I'm throwing the flag there, but. But, well, like you said, Pat, what was that, five now? Personal foul penalties, 15-plus yard penalties? I don't think that one was warranted, obviously. Sure. 75 yards of penalties is a lot. Well above the average. Pick it under pressure, escapes Surratt. And he did a good job of turning a loss into at least a positive play of a yard. Pickett's a gunslinger. This is a guy that believes that he can make every throw, and he's throwing into tight windows sometimes. I would just got to say, nice job of not forcing something there. You see the pressure coming from Surratt. He's the linebacker here. He gets in there. Pickett's got his eyes downfield, does an excellent job of being elusive. Kind of his best Ben Roethlisberger, if you will. Uses his legs. It's an excellent job. Surratt makes the stop on Davis here. Third down coming up for Pitt. It's funny to see Mark Whipple call these pass concepts. He said, hey, I run a pro-style offense and when it comes to the passing game. I recognize just about every play he's running out here. Yeah. He's running some West Coast stuff. He's running some old Steelers stuff. He's running some Dallas Cowboys stuff. He said when he got back to college after being in the NFL, he said he's going to put more expectation on the players, more plays, putting in plays the day before games. He said he thinks that these guys have pick and handle it. It's kind of a professional mentality, right? No doubt. He said, we're going to challenge them. We're going to put more on their plate. I'm not concerned about their free time. Blitz for the Tar Heels. Pick it off the back foot. He's got his man. Malik Carter with a first down inside the 15. And we're just talking about it. That's a blitz adjustment. Not only does the quarterback have to know about it, but Carter, the running back, has to know. He has a route. He sees everyone come blitz. He's just going to break inside really quick, secure the catch. It's a hot adjustment. There's guys in the NFL that don't make that adjustment every time. This is a well done by Pitt. You talk about Pickett playing at the next level. These guys are adamant. Hey, he'll be an NFL quarterback someday. They clearly know what he can handle mentally. Davis. Working his way down to the 11. They haven't had a lot of success scoring touchdowns on the season, but this this evening, they've kicked a field goal, they missed a field goal, and then last time they were down there, they pounded it in on the ground. It's almost like they think Mark Whipple might do a little bit more of that this trip down here. Yeah, they've run two in tonight, and uh, you know, if you're looking at a scouting report, if you're North Carolina, you're not expecting that. This is the first time in a game that Pittsburgh has had two rushing touchdowns in a year since last November against Wake Forest. It's a wild stat. Well, that's because the wild cat. Oh. Pick it. To the near side and just gets run out of bounds. And so that's a play right there where everyone's running the run play and just the quarterback knows, hey, I'm keeping I'm the keeping ball. this one. Uh, unfortunately, I think Surratt knew as well. I watched Peyton do that for like 35 yards one time. <laughs> the whole defense was like, there's no way Peyton keeps this ball. <laughs> Wouldn't be shocked if that was a career long run for him. I think it was. It was against Oakland, sneaky athletic. But I've been impressed with Kenny Pickett's athleticism and confidence this evening and toughness. And to play at Pittsburgh in this city, Coach Narduzzi said you have to be that to especially play for this team. Third and five here, you can get on the 10, you can still get a first down if you don't get in the end zone. Curious if the play call will sort of reflect that. Reflect that. Pickett over the middle. Mack made the catch shy of the sticks, and Miles Dorn came in like a rocket to make the stop shy of the line to gain. Fourth down, tie game inside of six to go. Big decision here. 
I'm sure they want to go for it, but kicking the field goal is absolutely the thing they need to do. They're hesitating, but they got to kick this field goal. Take the points. Kessman tonight is one for two. Remember, he missed from 26 after making from 41. This would be from 24 for Kessman. He's made 11 of his last 13 after a very cold start. For the lead, it is good. Another tight one tonight in the Coastal between Pitt Baylor for the top spot in the Big 12. <laughs> You gotta wear camo and a McAfee jersey around here. Yeah, don't wanna be seen. I was gonna say, nobody wants to be seen in the of, Pat McAfee jersey. A lot, lot of skeletons in that closet here in Pittsburgh, guys. <laughs> Not just in the closets, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a couple bars Whoa. with some skeletons in the closet, Whoa. too. I invested in a lot of these local stuff. <laughs> Charlie Brewer, Jalen Hurts, it's gonna be exciting on Saturday night on ABC down in Waco, Texas, as we get a look at our college football playoff rankings brought to us by Chick-fil-A. Week two of the playoff rankings, LSU, up to the top spot, they've got Ole Miss on Saturday night on ESPN. It's going to be an incredible weekend of college football. Waco, Texas is going to be nuclear on Saturday morning for college. And Lincoln Riley and Matt Rule, two guys being considered for NFL jobs. They both say they're not leaving, but they're being considered. North Carolina starts from the 25-yard line and on the ground. We'll get Michael Carter for a few. Wrapped up by Paris Ford. All three timeouts for North Carolina, two for the Panthers. These two teams have each played nine games this year. Eight of Mac Brown's games have been one possession games. Six of Pat Narduzzi's games have been one possession games. A little history for North Carolina in terms of close ones. Back to the ground again, Michael Carter has set up about a third down and four here for North Carolina. These are the plays that you make whenever you want to win the close games. The third and medium on drives with five minutes left. Don't give the ball back to the pit offense right now. Matt Brown said he was used to winning the close games. This year they've been losing it, but they've been in every single game after a horrific year last year. These are the plays you have to make. And this crowd is in this game on this incredibly important third down. Howell over the middle, it's deflected and picked by Ford, but flags came flying in. You would think with Jazzy Stocker coming in on defense that it might be a pass interference call. Well, it's tips and overthrows. Gotta, Gotta get, get those. those for the secondary. But not one, not two, but three flags were thrown. Pass interference, defense, number seven. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Don't forget, Damar Hamlin, their excellent safety, got knocked out because of targeting. Jazzy Stocker replaced him. Yeah, Jay Stocker, he knows what's coming. RPO's coming. He gets in there just a little oh, bit yeah. too early. A little bit. I don't yeah. think Pat Narduzzi's going to be excited about that call, but this is a new life for Carolina. Another bailout penalty. This one from the senior Jazzy Stocker in his 45th career game trying to make a play. From the 40. How wrapped up and brought down by Jalen Twyman. Big number 97 with his eighth sack of the year. Jalen Twyman has been a guy that the coaching staff says has took the rest of the defense under his wing. Let's study more film. Let's work harder. He looks up to Aaron Donald and looked like Aaron Donald in a fourth quarter sack right there. You can't see me. He's a technician, Pat. Hard worker in the film room, in the weight room, but a technician on the field. That's why this team leads the country in sacks. They now surpass SMU. Whistle before the play. Pat Narduzzi uses his second timeout. Part of the ball being snapped. Timeout. Pittsburgh, their second timeout of the half. Hey, 30 seconds. It out. could come down to a field goal tonight. Yeah, and right now that's the only difference in this game. 27-24 North or Pitt over North Carolina. Kessman kicked that ball. 
right into a beautiful net provided by Allstate. This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Nobody well, we likes kickers the way the Thursday night crew. We appreciate our specialists. We said the four pit sacks have elevated them to the top of the charts in college football. SMU's got a great front. By the way, Chase Young will not play against Maryland, but is expected back just in time for that big game <laughs> against Penn time. State. <laughs> Obviously, we don't like that he was suspended at all. Two games, though, best case scenario there for Chase Young at Ohio State. But tonight, the pit D line has to eat, or Sam Howe has to make another incredible play. Second and long. Pitch showing pressure. They're bringing it. Howe steps up and delivers to Newsom for a first down. Inside the pit 40 yard line, Sam Howe delivers on target. 27 yards. Well, Kenny Pickett didn't throw an incompletion, and Sam Howe says, I got your back. He hasn't thrown. That's his seventh straight completion. Under pressure, under duress. I like they stepped up in the pocket too. There, just yep. cool as a cucumber. He like doesn't even doesn't even phase him. Three minutes left in the fourth. Doesn't he doesn't even have a phase clue. him. He's so good in the fourth quarter. The pressure all around him too. Two hands on the ball, eyes downfield, delivers a strike, throwing it with confidence. He was a four-year starter in high school. Not normal. He was a Division One baseball recruit, athlete. And he clearly has ice in his veins. I don't know what it is, but that seems like that's what it is. And I hope my kid has one fourth of it. Hey, and, and listen, I was here, I, I was there on campus in Chapel Hill this summer, spent some time with this coaching staff. They didn't know who their starting quarterback was going to be. They had all these young guys, and they were, I said, hey, who's your starting quarterback out of the spring? So, well, we don't know yet. We haven't announced it. We don't, we're not really sure. We haven't made a decision. It wasn't until basically fall camp started that they even named a starter, and it's this true freshman named Sam Howell, and he is balling. Congrats, Chapel Hill. You got a guy. When we finish up here in Pittsburgh, stick around for Sports Center. We've got Kenny Main and Michael Eaves hanging out. They'll have Steelers and Browns reaction. How did I do on that one, Pals? Right? Incredible, Don, Don here. <laughs> Expectations for Deshaun Watson against Lamar Jackson. That is going to be awesome between a couple of Heisman guys and or at least candidates for Deshaun's case. Chris Dobbs Porcing is back at Madison Square Garden as a Maverick. Paul George makes his Clippers debut. Sports Center coming up. Dane Jackson was the injured pit player. The cornerback got taken off the field. Was walking under his own power. Again, that is a key loss. He's their captain, an impact player in a veteran secondary. Damari Mathis is back in on one side. Fresh set of downs for North Carolina inside the 40. Howell patting those feet, leaving it up top, and it was deflected away. Excellent extension. Well, that was a difficult play by Pinnock. And really, nobody is open. Sam Howell's doing his best in the pocket, eyes downfield, but this pit defense had everybody on lockdown. Deslin Alexander gets in there on the pressure at the end, but great technique by Pinnock there. Not wrapping his left hand around, causing a penalty, just getting up there and batting that thing away. He's a tall corner, but losing Dane Jackson to that injury, he is their best cover guy. There's Carter on the screen, flag is thrown. As he works down to the 35 yard line, but we'll check the marker here. Holding offense, number five, 10 yard penalty, second down. We've got the receiver Daz Newsom on the perimeter for the holding penalty. That's going to make up a second and long. And all of Heinz Field knew it the moment it happened. <laughs> they erupted as if they made a field goal or something. This is just a little wide receiver kind of bubble screen. Daz Newsom on the block. That's a tougher block than people realize for wide receivers in the slot there. But that penalty hurt him. The second down and 20 back at the 49. Most penalty yards North Carolina's had since the opener against South Carolina. Flip it out to the outside and Deami Brown will get a lot of that yardage back. Third down and a long 10 coming. Yeah, and it was second and 20. Your goal in second and 20 is to get half of it back. 
They call an out route at exactly 10 yards. Now it's third and 10. And this is tough because we've discussed Noah Ruggles. Some key misses from the kicker position right now. So how do you play this on third and 11? If it's not a really short fourth down, then it's two down territory. How? Hmm. Throws towards the sticks and is caught. It's a first down. Daz Newsome having a career night tonight with over 150 yards receiving. And you could see his disappointment when he got called for the holding call and he came back and said, hey, I'm gonna make up for that. Daz Newsom with an incredible route, an out route, it's up top, well done. And that ball by Sam Howe. Well, you guys have said it a couple times, like ice water in the veins, doesn't even realize it's the fourth. Hasn't flinched. Delivers to the far sideline this time to Bo Corrales. Works down near the 20, inside of the 19. 100 seconds left. And they, they went with the play action to Antonio Williams, and he might have walked in had they given him the ball. <laughs> I think this team realizes they can feel what we feel up here. Sam Howell has something special, and he's got this team driving. They feel like they're going to stop Sam Howell. Remember Pat Narduzzi used a couple timeouts. He only has one left. Powell hands it off right up the gut. And Antonio Williams, who's had a fantastic night tonight with over 100 yards, adds six more. He moves the chains. Clock stops momentarily to move the chains. I think Phil Longo heard you there, Matt. Feed it right up the gut there. It's wide open. Hands on hips on this pit D right now. Williams. Spins away, still on his feet. Good rally to the football by that pit defense. Camp Wright get there first, Chase Pine second. It'll be second down coming up. And the danger is getting too conservative here because you realize that you're in field goal territory. Sam Howell's only got one incompletion, eight for nine on this drive, or sorry, in this fourth quarter. You're saying let him sling it a I'm couple times. I'm just saying times. don't forget what got you here. Clock continues to move down to 25 seconds. How for the lead in the end zone, and it's incomplete. He's trying to find Big Bo Corrales at six foot four. He's targeted him late in games often. They go with the jump ball, the 50-50 ball, but it's a bail technique by the DB, meaning that he's got his eyes on you. Pinnock's also tall. Fortunate that there wasn't a penalty called on Bo Corrales for a little bit of a push off. But I don't dislike the play call at all. The energy in this stadium has picked up immensely. 21 seconds left here. Matt, third and 12. Max trying to call a timeout. Gets it. First one. Timeout. North Carolina. Their first timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. Comebacks in back-to-back -back games for Mac Brown's team to open the season against South Carolina. Coming back in the fourth quarter, did it against Miami in the ACC opener as well. They've trailed in the fourth quarter multiple times this year. They've come back to win too. And a big reason why they've been in a lot of these games with the young lineup is their freshman quarterback, Sam Howell. He's been great in the fourth quarter again tonight. And they believe in him, and that is half the battle. When you're trying to be the quarterback, of a team, of a franchise, of a school. Your teammates and coaches believe in you is half the battle. Well, Mac Brown said Sam Howell is the first freshman that's ever been voted captain to one of his teams. And it's happened twice this year, including tonight. The players vote for the game captain. It's Sam Howell. He's a freshman. He's been unbelievable all season, and especially tonight here in the fourth. He and Shane Bouchelle, each with 10 fourth quarter passing touchdowns, just fourth quarter. That's at the top of all of college football. Still two timeouts for North Carolina, one for Pitt, clock up to 22 seconds. Still third down and 12 coming. And let's not forget, like this Pitt defense, this timeout, they had their hands on their hips. Huge for them. They're the number one team in the country at getting sacks. They've got some playmakers in the back end as well. So even though momentum is on North Carolina's side, this crowd is getting on their feet for Pitt. To the end zone, and it's broken up. Jason Pinnock had the coverage on Corrales again. 
This is exactly what I was talking about. You can throw a fade on a bump and run press coverage corner, but this is pretending to be bump and run, and then he bails out with eyes on the quarterback. Almost impossible to complete that, complete that pass. So now, Pat, take me inside Noah Ruggles' head. Noah Ruggles has not had the most amazing year, but who cares? He's been great under 40, 32 yards, prime time television to tie it up in the fourth with 17 seconds left. Timeout. It'll be Pat Narduzzi icing Ruggles. Pittsburgh, their third and final timeout of the half. 30 seconds, timeout. Ruggles has made one from 25 tonight. And now Mack Brown goes over and says, hey, you're going to make this kick. That's what he told us earlier. He said to his kicker, hey, you're going to be okay. You're going to make this kick. He had some struggles late in that game, that six overtime contest against Virginia Tech in particular. But an opportunity to keep North Carolina, uh, North Carolina alive in this game. 17 seconds to go. We told you the scenario for Pitt. They need to win out to have a shot at the Coastal, and they need Virginia Tech to beat UVA. North Carolina needs two wins in their last three to reach a bowl. That was fascinating for me to see Mac Brown talk to the kicker. That dynamic, you never know. Should you talk to the kicker? Should you leave him alone? I think that's all overplayed. Honestly, I do. Because you're a really good kicker. Well, that was an average one, but I was around the greatest of all time for a long time. Here we Not go. A chance to think about it, though. Ruggles to tie it from 32. Noah Ruggles, calm and cool, ties this game. Excellent execution all around by the kicking unit. Yeah, great snap, great hold, and when you need it, you need it, and when you don't, you don't. Noah Ruggles steps up and knocks one through for his entire team. Calm, cool, collected, right down the center. Gotta love to see that. Good for Noah Ruggles hitting that ball. And now, 13 seconds left, fourth quarter. Yeah, a lot of game left all of a that sudden. That was a smooth and easy technique there by the kicker, but I gotta say, as a former holder, in some cold games up in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the pressure is on the holder, pressure is on the snapper, yeah. the guy's protecting. Never get talked about unless you mess up. <laughs> Everything's happening in 1.25, 1.3 seconds. A full snap, a hold, a kick, there's a lot, and that was perfectly executed by these student human athletes from University of North Carolina. Mm. Trevor Collins on the snap, and Cooper Graham on the hold, allowing Ruggles to put away the game-tying field goal with still 13 seconds remaining. Pitts out of timeouts. Jockey Jacques Louis has been productive the last couple of games. He's back to return. Can he deliver a big one? Picks it up after the drop. And he'll get shut down just across the 20-yard line. Still six seconds remaining. North Carolina has lost 17 straight games when they've trailed by 14 or more. They trailed at one point 24 to 10 scored 17 of the last 20 points. Nothing that happened before Mac Brown got here matters, though. He's re-energized this entire program. Looks like the Panthers are going to take a knee and take this to overtime, unless we got a two-lane. Well, yeah, I was going to say, unless Willie Fritz shows up. But indeed, we're going to go to overtime. Free football. Let's, uh, let's, let's applaud the free football. I'm all right with that. <laughs> here we I go. like free football. <laughs> The last overtime game Pitt played was against Syracuse last year. They won by seven. North Carolina went six overtimes against Virginia Tech earlier this year. Free football in Pittsburgh. Come on back. We're going to have a 27-27 game. The captains will come out onto the field for Pat Narduzzi and Mac Brown. Maurice French is one of the captains. He was injured in the last game, but he's wearing his number two jersey. We'll get... Our lead official, Dwayne Haight, to walk us through the coin toss. Extra football right, this in the is Steel the start City. Of the overtime period. The rules of overtime is that we will have one coin toss this entire overtime period. The winner of the toss will determine if they want to go elect to go on offense, defense, or determine the end of the field they want to play on. 
We will start first and 10 from the 25 yard line and each team will have one timeout in each overtime period. Any questions? Any questions? All right, you're going to call the coin toss, North Carolina. What is your selection? Tails. Tails. Tails is called again. The 150 logo is heads. The football logo is tails. Football tails, 150 heads. Tails was called. It is tails. North Carolina, you won the toss. That is elected to go on defense. Which end of the field? All right, let's turn this way. To start the first overtime period, Pittsburgh will be on offense and will play at the far end of the field. Let's give you the updated rules of overtime as well. Obviously, Mac Brown and North Carolina have already been through that fifth overtime against Virginia Tech. That game went to six OTs, but top of the first, bottom of the first overtime, and we'll continue on if need be after that. You have to go for the two-point conversion after a touchdown, starting with the third OT. It's a two-point shootout, essentially, starting with the fifth overtime. And you do get rest periods after the second and fourth OT. These rules were changed basically after that LSU Texas A&M game that went to seven overtimes. And really it was a daunting task for a lot of those athletes in that game. Coach Narduzzi's jumping around the huddle saying, hey, let's go. We'll be on offense first. Just as we uh, it kind of expected, guys. It's a yep. close game. It was a uh, Pittsburgh came in less than a touchdown favorite. They've played nothing but close games all year, and Kenny Pickett's going to line up wide. They're going to go wildcat to start overtime with A.J. Davis. And he's got nothing. Maybe a yard on the plate. Jeremiah Gimmel was there. And they've done that a lot tonight just yep. to get a nice positive play on first down. You know it's coming. I think at this point, Carolina probably knew it was coming as well. I think one of the keys tonight, though, for Pittsburgh is they haven't turned the ball over. Last two games, six turnovers. No turnovers tonight. That's been the key. They came in minus five in turnover margin. North Carolina came in at plus three. One pick by Sam Howell in this game. Pick it back in behind the center. And a flag is thrown. Procedure penalty. False start against Pitt. False start. Offense. Number 82. Five yard penalty. Second down. Freshman Jared Wayne. There's this fifth career game tonight. He's had some big catches, especially early. The interesting thing here, Pitt's offense has not been that successful in the red zone this season. Now you're condensing the field basically to the red zone. Yeah, this year they've had, or tonight they've had a little bit of success running one in, throwing in. But only two touchdowns in their five trips. That's below their season average already in terms of touchdown rate. A second and long, Pickett. Trying to find Taysir Mack. Looked like there was a deflection on that play. I'm sure the fans maybe wanted pass interference, but as soon as the ball is deflected, any pass interference is negated. So I think maybe Jason Strobridge got a paw on that ball, which again would negate any pass interference. Jason Strobridge going to be a next level player. Move him out to DN, gets the big paw up, bats the ball. Which completely waves off any pass interference, much to the chagrin of this Heinz Field crowd. Good and, use of chagrin, right? And the problem here for Pitt is they're they're on the right on the cusp of a long field goal yeah. as well. So obviously you're looking to score a touchdown here, but you gotta be careful. Third and 14. Pick it. Finds a man, and that's good enough for a first down for Taysir Mack. Yeah. When they needed him most, he comes up clutch. Wow, with Maurice French out, someone has to step up. We said it in the open to Sear Mack. We expected him to be that guy. Nice accuracy on the ball. He stops the receiver with the back shoulder throw, keeping him away from trouble there. Tamont Fox was coming to knock him out. And Pickett delivers okay. once again. Mack tripped up. I oh, beg your pardon, Shockey Jacques Louis tripped up. The ball came loose at the end, but he was already down. They pick up eight on that play, guys. And a lot of runaway routes, a lot of crossers, shallow crossers, mid-range crossers. It's an easier way to get open sometimes in a, in a condensed red zone. A little shoestring tackle there for Jacques Louis. Almost got out. There's A.J. Davis. 
Going to power ahead. That is good enough for a first down. First down and goal for Pitt. First and goal, and I would not count out Kenny Pickett's legs. Sure. He's already rushed for a touchdown tonight. Yeah, I would not count that out. It's something you got to think about here, keeping Pittsburgh out of the end zone. He's been running a lot tonight, to his right, mostly. Pickett has 50 rushing yards. It's the second most rushing yards he's had in a game this year. I would love to put, like, a Fitbit on him tonight. <laughs> With all the running sideline. back and forth, yep. Extra football, too. This is big. Pickett keeps it. Running in for the touchdown, his second of the night. Student sections losing their mind over there. Kenny Pickett once again calls his own number. Little RPO, keeps it to the left. Sneaks in for four yards out. We talked about it. Kenny Pickett has been a weapon with his legs tonight. Scrambling, rolling, design runs. Big touchdown here in the first overtime. Tessman on the extra point. Every point feels bigger in overtime, and it's a seven-point lead for Penn, putting the pressure on North Carolina. Well, none of it would have been possible without the throw to Tasir Mack, but that was Kenny Pickett as well. They go with a little fake lead play, and then the quarterback's going to keep it with a lead blocker. Nice job by Wheeler. A stand-up touchdown for Pitt. And now... The pressure turns to Sam Howell. We've seen him in the fourth quarter. We've seen him in overtimes. Can he continue, continue the magic? Kenny Pickett brought it tonight. Let's see what Sam Howell has on the other side. Sam Howell does not flinch. He does not blink in these situations. He's been great all season in the fourth quarter and overtime. Again, in the last 15 years, 0-40 when trailing by 14 or more entering the fourth quarter. They trailed by 14 tonight. We talked about how great Sam Howell has been in the fourth quarter, but it's come down to one play, one play against Clemson, one play against Virginia Tech. Now the pressure on the freshman and the Carolina offense. Off the fake. Howell wants it all on play number one, and it's incomplete. Streaking down the sideline, Daz Newsom with Jason Pinnock in coverage. Pinnock has played starters reps this year, so that is a nice substitution to have with Dane Jackson having left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, mostly a special teams guy, but he's played, and he, he's a great matchup, I think. You, no surprise that they go RPO right off the bat. Inside fade again, but Pinnock was up for it. Jackson back out there, as you saw. Part of that veteran secondary for Pitt. Going up against the freshman QB. Howell hit as he throws, and it drops incomplete. Boy, Deslin Alexander just collapsed the pocket and forced the air and throw. It's third down. He has been solid tonight, Deslin Alexander. We talk a lot about Pat Jones and Jalen Twyman, as we should. Deslin Alexander came to play tonight. Disruptive. Not a stat you see. But it's one that the North Carolina Tar Heels have been feeling from Deslin Alexander. Remember, they lost Rashad Weaver before the season. They lost Keyshawn Camp in the opener. Third down and 10 for Sam Howell. Four man rush. Howell sidesteps. He's got to take off and run. We'll pick up decent yardage on third down. It's fourth down and four here. And obviously, they have to go for it down by seven. Yeah, and we just mentioned Pat Jones. He comes free, has an opportunity for a sack. Sam Howell wisely gets out of the pocket. That was two down territory. The game comes out to this play right here. Timeout. Each team gets a timeout in the overtime timeout. period. Pittsburgh, their one and final timeout of this overtime period. And Pat Narduzzi has used, I feel like he's used all of his timeouts on defense, on right? defense yeah. or special teams tonight. The well, interesting was, thing for me yeah. was North Carolina got to pick the side of the field they wanted to play on. They picked right in front of the Pitt student section. I wonder, Pat, and tell me if I might be wrong, of a lot of stadiums in the country, 
college kickers don't necessarily see a closed end and an open end, especially one that a lot of NFL kickers have said, this is a hard stadium to kick towards when you're kicking towards the river. Yeah. You wonder if maybe that had something to do with it. Yeah, I'd be I curious. like that a lot. I like that mindset. But right now, they put a little pressure on the North Carolina offense with the sound in the stadium. I was just, and, that, and to your point, and they got to go right into the and, student and guys, that, that that noise, if we're talking about crowd noise, who is that hard on? It's hard on your tackles, your offensive linemen. Right. You know, they go that clap snap, and we say the science department said you can hear the clap, but it's still tough on these offensive tackles in a loud stadium in pass protection. Fourth down and four for North Carolina. Game right here. Into space for Newsom. He's got to get the 15, and he does. First down, North Carolina. They convert on fourth down, and Newsom tacks on to his career night with eight more yards. A little return route by Daz Newsom. He comes inside, breaks back outside. Sam Howell, cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Little yards after the catch for the first down. Fourth and four, and you come out with that incredibly <laughs> savage route. What a route run there by Newsom. Ball at the 11-yard line, first down and 10. Here's Williams. Right at the line of scrimmage, nothing there. Deslin Alexander out on the perimeter with Chase Pine. Antonio Williams has had the best night of his North Carolina season. Former Ohio State Buckeye. He popped up. A couple big ones right up the gut earlier in the yep. game. He's going to work for us for him tonight. Over 100 yards rushing for the first time. Powell looking to the end zone and incomplete. Dane Jackson had the coverage and really almost became the offensive player. Bo Corrales had to become the defender. This is just a hope and a prayer by Sam Howell. They go with an RPO. He looks left, comes back right. And Bo Corrales does a nice job of playing DB at this point. Dane Jackson's all over it. He ran the route for Bo Corrales there. And he wanted a flag. He probably deserved one there. Bo Corrales, quarterback's best friend. That game, I mean, that's the end of the game if he doesn't play DB like that. Third down and 11. Al pumps. Hall gets wrapped up with a sack. Guess who? Big 97. What an Aaron Donald's number, Jalen Twyman. And guys, I was just about to say, they don't feel any need to bring blitzers. They believe they can get a pass rush with this D-line. This four-man rush provides plenty of pressure on the quarterback. Jalen Twyman. The leader of this D-line, a dominant force, most sacks in the country. And whenever you need them, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time situation. Jalen Twyman beats his guy, wraps up Sam Howell so he doesn't get any big-time personal foul and just brings him down softly here. <laughs> Five sacks for Pitt tonight. Jalen Twyman, since Aaron Donald's senior year in 2013, only two players have worn 97, but it's usually just handed out by the equipment manager. Jalen Twyman said, give me 97. He's one of the top sack men in the ACC, and when Pitt's defense gets going, as they have tonight, they usually win under the defensive-minded Pat Narduzzi. Fourth down, and essentially goal here on fourth and 16 for the 17. Sam Howell, can he do it again in the fourth quarter? To the end zone, incomplete, and Pitt survives in overtime. Their coastal dreams are still alive. What a scene here. The Pitt team is storming the field in pure excitement. One guy hit a backflip. Narduzzi gave a guy a hug. They've been winning these close games. Mac Brown said they've been losing these close games. Tonight was just that. 
fourth and 16 and overtime is tough when you need a touchdown. Sam Howell almost made a play. And guys, it was Deslin Alexander again. He comes on the outside rush. Sam Howell's trying to buy a little time. Relentless pursuit. I don't know if he got a hand on it or if Sam Howell just felt the pressure from behind. But Daz Newsom is open and Sam Howell's not able to deliver the ball, possibly because of the pressure and touching, touching of the ball by Deslin Alexander. We mentioned that all the other guys get a lot of attention, but Deslin Alexander's been solid. Helps him get the win tonight. Pat Narduzzi and Kenny Pickett come away with a key win to keep their Coastal Division Championship hopes alive. Final.